There's a little garage on a small town street. I like to meet my friends there every week, and I know we'll talk about some facts and things. History and science and some crazy shit. Talking it out with Alan, Ben, and Nick, and I know that it's gonna be a weird ass show. Ooh, insanity abounds. Ooh, the world is spinning round. Now we're gonna break it down. is awesome weren't we supposed to do something today i mean technically we're here for a uh podcast oh fuck we have <laughs> one of those don't we kinda hey guys yeah. um thanks for tuning in we are informed and confused i'm ben i'm alan i didn't prepare <laughs> doesn't matter let's face it we never prepare so yeah we're gonna talk about star wars this week um (laughs) now give it given that we are all uh in our 30s we all lived through the re-release of the original trilogy so i suggest we start there i was about to say i actually remember Mm -hmm. when they uh re-released the original three star wars empire strikes back and uh return Mm -hmm. of the jedi in theaters as the special editions, as the unveil uh, of the special that's, that's editions. The first time that I was the first re- time we saw <coughs> Star Wars. Oh, no, no. Well, we, uh, I, we had them on VHS at my house. Yeah. I had seen them before that, but I remember those. Yeah, I'm Once like that. Once my father found <coughs> out that they were re-releasing, he took <laughs> the VHSs and put them up on a shelf high enough that I couldn't get at them and told me I wasn't allowed to watch the VHS of the movie until we had seen it in theaters. So I had never seen Star Wars. That's almost the child release. abuse. <laughs> yeah, I got to <clears throat> experience them as they released in theaters, much the same way that he did back in the seventies and eighties. Yeah, no, I'm like Nick. I I, I just know, didn't have to wait as long. I know for a fact that I seen saw the originals before the special editions. I don't remember it, but I've been told. But that's that's the first ones I remember. You know, yeah, I, I, I saw can the special editions it. first <clears throat> and then was allowed to go home and watch the original on Cause VHS. Because wh- what? The special editions came out in 97? Uh, I believe so. I wanted to say 96, but in that time frame, yeah. I believe 97. Mid, late 90s, yeah. Which means I would have been 11. That actually believe, brings up a point. Um, as much as we claim we didn't plan this, we did plan this and we do have rules. Yeah. Um, for those of you on camera, I'll hold our rules up. For, for full disclosure, we did this once before, and the recording fucked up so horribly. We, we went on for like four hours, and we're ready to murder one another at the end, mm. and the recording shit out like an hour in. Hmm. So, for, for anybody who might have not like been able to... To read them, do we want to actually like? Uh, I did hold it them? up there yeah, for well, a bit, but well, we have glare issues, yeah, so let's, let's go run through. through. Yeah, let's go through them here. Number one rule: we are talking about the movies. Well, I guess that's one and two. We're not delving into the books, the comics, the video games, any of the TV expanded shows. lore. Doesn't we, matter we are, if it's Disney. Doesn't matter if it's Lucas. Films only. only. No. Because that was another problem we had yeah. the first for, time. For, we and for the about record, this. let's just briefly go into this. Um, our uh, background here: we basically have two two people who uh, are big uh, le- legends. It doesn't uh, matter. Individuals. They're not allowed. And no, one it, person, myself, it does who's the to our well, own just for experience. a point of reference, just this point of reference, so they know where we're coming from. Yeah, uh, Alan, you're a Disney. I'm a, I am a canon, canon guy. I, I, I've always been a fan of the movies, um, but I didn't really start getting into Star Wars in a broad, like, bigger sense until after the, um, until after the uh, Disney buyout <laughs> and uh, the switch over. To we should probably turn these off. And, and you were complaining about me breaking your stuff? Yes. 
But if yeah. I break my stuff, I can't bitch. If someone else breaks my stuff, yeah. I get to bitch for days. No, oh, but so like I've read uh, all but I think like two or three of the new canon novels. I've dabbled in a little bit of the comics. Whereas um, I'm completely the opposite. I've pretty much ignored Disney, but I I have read everything in Legends. Yeah. Yes, and Nick is. I like what I like. Nick, Nick's in the middle. Nick's <laughs> mostly small lockdown with tits. <laughs> Yeah, although I think we, we've all seen Clone Wars, right? Yeah, we've all seen Clone Wars. Bill and I have seen Rebels. Yeah, I've I seen part of it. You've seen part of Rebels, okay. I've seen the Spice Wilds. <laughs> uh, Hell, I, I even watched a little <laughs> bit of that weird CGI rebellion. Um, oh, uh, Resistance? Yeah, Resistance. Yeah, I, I've seen the whole of that. <coughs> I started uh, watching it, but it was just a bit painful. Oh. But anyway, so, yeah, we are not talking about yeah. any of that today. Yeah. Even though we just talked about it. Uh, rule number three. Number three, you only get to justify an argument for or against someone else in this discussion with a certain point of view. Once you get one, <laughs> not one per movie, not one per trilogy, one. One. I want to burn it right now, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I mean, you could. There's no rule preventing it. Um, actually, our next rule might. Um, force-based puns will be met with force. Like, physical force. Yeah, and these, these are the combat saber yeah, type of they, things. They, you they, can't break these. Yep. Hit it harder. Really fucking go for it. Well, I don't want to knock that yeah, no, cup over. I've got. So, <laughs> but no, uh, we have sparred with these at full. Uh, yeah, these yeah. will do real damage. We could actually kill each other with these, literally. Oh, especially if you flipped them around, beat them with the metal end. That that's. Yeah, yeah if we do mm-hmm. that, this won't get posted. Sorry, we're not posting snuff films. Well, I mean, yeah. it might. You know what the police will do after it's in evidence. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, <coughs> rule number five: No droids. That means no phone, no internet, no going to Wikipedia to back up our argument. Has um, to come entirely out of our own brains, for better or worse. Oh, um, definitely yeah. worse. We're Star Wars fans. There's no better in us. Yeah. And um. Let's see. Number six is no one gets to claim the high ground. Mm-hmm. Now, now that said, if the other two people kind of tell you to shut up and support one of the the remaining here, like if you can get a mutual consensus that somebody's lost, you have the high ground. Don't don't do it, Anakin. But you don't get to just say you have it. That that's a common issue I have found in every single Star Wars debate. Someone will just say something, and that they'll support their argument. But they will portray their opinion as fact when it is still just opinion. Yes. Agreed. And the obvious number seven, no disintegrations. Oh, man. Hmm. I'm going to have to rethink my entire strategy for the Disney movies. Sorry, I would like to be able to get together next week to continue doing this. Well, no, he's, Hmm. he's the one who's subservient to the mouse. (laughs) <laughs> well, it's all right. I have, uh, while you weren't looking, I have confiscated everybody's blasters and uh, hidden them away. So there shouldn't be any problem. Th- they're in the smuggling compartment back there? Well, not back there. If it was back there, it would be easy enough for you to go and get it. It's in the smuggling compartment. Only if he knew where it was. Elsewhere. Stick knives <laughs> in the corner. I'll be fine. <laughs> uh, if it comes down to it, I know what to do. Okay, so right. um, how about we start with the original, the uh-huh. very first, the Star Wars. Star yes. Wars. Um, now, Nick, do you want to explain a little bit of how we're going to go around the table with each of these? Uh, basically, what we're going to do is uh, each of us is going to go around, point out uh, what we think is the best part of the film, what we think is the worst part of the film, and a part that we think nobody really talks about. There, yeah. there, there's any number of reasons that some can be overlooked or just not brought up in greater discussion, but that doesn't mean it's not 
worth discussing. Mm. Yep. Should we also do uh, overrated? I, I feel you could use it interchangeably here. That's the point. Of just okay. something that's not frequently discussed, but that you... Something that stands out to you. Yeah, okay. That sounds good. Um, you want to start us off? Uh, well... Let, let's start well, off with favorite things about the movie and go around the table. Let's do uh, favorites, then least favorites, least favorites and, and then... then yeah, yeah. Mo- mop up about. just to make just yeah. to make sure nobody's oddball is something we've brought up. So the right. original movie. What was your? F- what was Nick's favorite part? Ah, oh. now this is very hard for me to nail down because the original Star Wars is my absolute favorite. A New Hope to me is the pinnacle of Star Wars movies, <laughs> and and I I understand that it has shortcomings, and and I'll be more than willing to capitulate to those when you guys bring up yours. But, like, there's a air of discovery <laughs> that A New Hope has. Oh, it was mm-hmm. a completely new universe. Yeah, yeah which, which it's going to be because it's the first part of a new story. So, I mean, mm-hmm. all of it is new. So, like, by design, it, it has to have this. Yeah, uh, everything yeah. afterwards was just in some way referential to what we learned in the first. Right, you right. never got that sense of yeah, even, discovery even, again. Yeah, no, even with the later <laughs> films, like, even when they introduce new stuff, it's never again as impactful. Yeah. Like, the, the first yeah. time you you see the cantina scene in Moss Eisley, whether you see the original version, whether you see the special edition versions, that sticks with you. You, you, yeah, you have all the aliens mm-hmm. there's, and the everything there's this, else. There's this sense of grandeur and discovery to this universe. There's an atmosphere about A New Hope that yeah. I, I just don't think any of the others have. That's what I was going to use was atmosphere. <laughs> there's, there's an atmosphere to... Specifically, Funny considering how much of it takes place in space. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That was a spaceless joke. I, more importantly, I didn't break a rule. <laughs> I, I'm starting to worry the rule should have just been no puns in general. Oh, oh it no, should have been, no. but that's, that's nope. not what it's here for. Uh, all right. Uh, I wouldn't be allowed at the table then. Right. You want. Um, you want to go next? Bill? Okay. Yeah, uh, my absolute favorite Ping-pong. thing yeah. about that about the, uh, I guess tr- or trilogy as a whole, but the first movie more so than mm-hmm. anything else, John Motherfucking Williams, the music, the orchestral, it is so much of the oh atmosphere, my God. yeah, the music, yeah. Yeah. fucking Luke's theme as he's watching oh, the twin the sunset. Right? Mm-hmm. It, yeah, you can't get better than that. I need to talk about the first experience. The, that's the yeah. first time you hear that. I, d- I refuse and to believe. Just, uh, I refuse to believe like someone could be unmoved by like the gravity of some of the moments in that soundtrack. Yeah, I'm gonna that's, silence my droid now. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. We don't serve their kind here. Get rid of them. Um, uh, aside from the atmospheric things, though, um, Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford's <laughs> acting yeah. in that movie just blows me away what every acting? single what time. What acting? He was just a dude who built uh, uh, George Lucas's patio. He wasn't an actor. <laughs> yeah, he no. was a day laborer. Yeah, no, uh, you watch him at any time throughout those movies, and particularly in the first one, and just fantastic. I actually think that's probably the most fun Harrison Ford ever had while making a movie, filming A New Hope. Like, I don't think he'll ever admit that, but when you look at, like, behind-the-scenes shit of him in, like, Mm -hmm. all of his later projects (coughs) versus the the behind-the-scenes shit of A New Hope, part of it's he's much younger than... Oh, it was, as we've said, his first real acting gig. But at the same time, it seems like... Other times he had fun after the filming day had wrapped and he enjoyed his co-stars and he had great relationships with people. <coughs> with Star Wars, <coughs> he was cracking up in between fucking takes because people were really fucking great and really fucking loved each other on that set. Yeah, It, it showed through in the final Oh, product. yeah, I've I oh, read yeah. a bunch of uh, things on the filming of that and the crew was really tight. Mm-hmm. Well, also, for the first movie, it was uh, insanely small compared to every well, single Star yeah. Wars movie. That. Uh, yeah. The first Star Wars movie, uh, Lucas was quoted as saying, if it worked, it made the theater cut. 
Like, yeah. none of their special effects worked. None of their props did what they wanted <laughs> them to do. Uh, the, the fucking yeah. uh, uh, scene with the sand person and the gaffy stick over their head. Yep. Yeah. That, yep. Is, that is looped footage of one thrust. <laughs> and after you know this, you will see it every time you watch it from now on that it's just looping. <laughs> They had one, and he turns it into, like, three or four. Uh, oh, yeah. The, the it gets the action of the scene, though. Like, it oh, still definitely. works. Yeah. Well, and that's another awesome thing about the movie is all of the practical effects that they had to use. And Well, not so much had. That's that's how you did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, that, that's how it was done in those days. And, and the, 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 the limits you know they pushed. That he, the things he had to come up with new to make that movie. Do you know what's really interesting? <laughs> In the uh, late 90s, early 2000s, modeling died a slow, painful death, and, like, literally just a handful of people were still doing, like, the old-school, intensive Hollywood model-type building. They finally figured out, like, in the early 20-teens, that if you take a physical model and do digital manipulation on top of that physical framework... You can get a better end result than a purest approach of either technique in right, standalone. Yeah. So that that small, small handful has now started teaching a new generation of these hybrid, like, computer programmer, builder, like, fucking Neo in the Matrix people. <laughs> Like and it, they're just expanding on the things that yeah. the core group learned. I I love all of that old school miniature work stuff, and like I'm so mm. pleased anytime I watch something now, and I can tell when something still has a miniature. What pisses me off is when they never make moving miniatures, and all the moving parts are digital. That pisses me off every yeah. single time. Mm. Oh, great! You gave him a physical box to stand on. Congratulations, assholes! You don't deserve a special effects trophy for this. Mm-hmm. Well, I yeah. think that uh, flows re- uh, nicely into the okay. What didn't you like? Well, about um, it? No, I, I haven't oh. actually. I, oh. I've been just sitting here this, waiting for you. You did this to him right. last time a bunch too. P- perhaps. I, yeah, uh, you. I think you're excited and you keep wanting to jump. I think so. Yeah. Uh, also, um, rule eight: stay on target. Just Great shooting, kid. <laughs> Am I one in a million? <laughs> uh, America, I don't have to be literate. Uh, anyways, all right. Um, be- because it is it's the original, you, and you kind of can't pick one thing, um, which I don't think either of you actually did. Do you need just me to narrow thing? it down to like a scene and an no, 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 no. special? Well, like, if if I point well, blank have to, I can. No, I, I'm, I'm justifying my music. own, not limiting myself to one thing. Um, I was because I was gonna, I was going to point out two. Yeah, two things. Um, oh, go for it. Go for it. Number one, we're not angry at each other yet. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got to win a tr- at least a trilogy <laughs> for that. Yeah, we have to get to the bad <laughs> movies. <laughs> um, no, um. The one thing exclusive to this movie, I think, is my f- is my favorite, is just the entire cantina scene. From when they walk into that Ross cantina, Ross Eisley is one. Of th- it's so <laughs> goddamn impactful. From the music to the costumes, everything in there again, is awesome. The atmosphere, the environment of it, the the, the feeling of it, the just uh, everything. Everything in A New Hope, <laughs> to me personally has a sort of air of magic and mystery to it. Because this this is before anything about the Force is quantified in any way, shape, or form. This is before you yeah. can even nail down that Jedi is really a religion, even though that's the I mean, language re- uh, Obi-Wan Realistically, uses. in this movie, the Force is three... The force Sorry, is, you were yeah. close to the release. Yeah, the we, for- had a, we had a hiccup last time, so... No, no. Um, the, the, the Force is three things in, in this movie. It's Obi-Wan telling him the Force is a thing, him being able to hit the rem- deflect the remote shot, and him taking the shot of the Death Star. That is literally all the Force does in this movie. It does two things 
and yeah, he's mentioned. I disagree. Yeah, you I disagree. could argue you don't even see it in the fight between I, him I and disagree. Vader, but Dude, he disappears. D- so I, 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 you're you're both overlooking the single true, the single true. greatest act of force <laughs> usage in that movie. Is this answer going to involve the words Han Solo? Hey, no. Uh, rule okay, number okay. one. It's about incest. It's so much worse. Okay. Oh, whoa. God. It's what told Luke not to lean in for tongue when Leia kissed him. <laughs> no expanded universe. That includes your fanfics. That's not fanfiction. That's in the movie, baby. For luck. True. <laughs> but uh, if, 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 if the Force was t- only telling him don't lean, don't lean in for tongue, uh, the, the Force was kind of half-assing it there. Should have been telling him don't don't go in for the kiss at all. And uh, force is a little bit. The southern. force the force <laughs> wasn't about to reject luck. Now I'll uh, mention Han Solo. Han Solo is proof that the force accepts luck as a valid answer. Anyways, my other than the canteen the cantina scene, um, and just because somebody has to say it at some point, Han shot first. Yeah, um, uh, I was waiting. I fell into the, the shit we hated See, and figured I felt it, it would come up then. Really? Because I actually love all the different cuts that they use to try and fix Lucas's dumb shit. I hate the fact mm. that they thought it needed fixing. I hate the fact that they did it so many fucking We're times. We're getting ahead. We have rules. Right. This Sorry. is yes. society. Yes. This is why I was waiting. <laughs> all right. Um. Anyways. Uh, the second thing I had was something that's really, it's actually more through the movies, especially the original trilogy, and that's just the, the dynamic between R2-D2 and C-3PO. Oh, yes. R2-D2 is just a boss, and 3PO just wants to be someplace else. And I, lo- I love oh, that Oh, it's dynamic. definitely you know, a dom I love it. I honestly there. feel a lot of 3PO gets lost from the original trilogy to the newer films, mm-hmm. even though I know it's been the same guy <laughs> in the suit because he was pretty young originally and... Yeah. He's just old and scrawny now, and he still <laughs> yeah. fits in the suit. Uh, I forget the his wonders first of name, Hollywood. Daniels. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I, I'm super Mr. bad Daniels. with names. I'm I know super that. bad with names. Yeah. Like uh, I've met new Chewbacca. He's new Chewbacca to me. That's <laughs> sad. That man held my saber staff. We had a moment. He called me out of the crowd more than once. Like no, we have He's pictures. a cool dude. He's new Chewy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it I think it was George or something like that. It was jo- Jonas. Yo- Jonas. Jonas. I think Jonas. Is his name. Jonas. Something I can't pronounce. He was a basketball player who sold insurance. <laughs> right. I remembered the details of his life. He was a cool dude. I uh, hope he comes to a con again. I'd love to see him again. He's a cool guy. Yeah. <coughs> I hope he takes my advice and shows up in a Chewy costume. That would be great. Mm. Right. He. Dude, he could wander through the con totally <laughs> unperturbed. People would just be like, nice costume. Can I get a picture? And then, he, you know, the people who go to his panel, he pulls the mask off and everyone loses their shit. It's like, oh, my God, I got a picture with the real Chewie earlier. Oh, my God. Oh, my yeah. God. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Uh, other actors have done it, but uh, oh, yeah. uh, Brian Cranston yeah. did it with a mask of Brian Cranston. <laughs> I, know. Yes. I love that. That was great. Oh, and I mean, Deadpool has gone to multiple <laughs> conventions disguised as Deadpool. Mm. Uh, well, Ryan Reynolds Ryan can't, Reynolds Ryan does Reynolds that all can't the fucking do time. a public event <laughs> like he's uh. Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> yeah. Uh. <clears throat> uh, another thing I really loved about uh, the first Star Wars movie was uh, the whole space battle with the Death Star, all done with miniatures and shit. That was just really cool. Because <clears throat> everybody did, too. I'll just uh, throw an honorable mention on here. A sequence that blew my mind as a little kid. And as an adult, I still think it's very impressive, even though I understand now from a like actual cinematography standpoint. Mm-hmm. It was pretty simple to do. It was just a large soundstage <coughs> uh, where they have uh, Obi-Wan on the <laughs> platform going around the column, mm. shutting off the uh, generator oh, yeah. as oh, the yeah. stormtroopers come through on the bridge. Yeah. Like, as a little kid, Over that, the blew, chasm. Yeah, yeah. that blew my mind because it was like the infinity drop, uh, like, inside the Death Star, which... No sense of scale to the Death Star. Like, to this day, I really don't. Uh, you yeah. see, like, three internal areas and the massive outer. 
but shell. but you you just see him going over this this fall that will definitely kill you and i have always been a pussy when it comes to heights i do not heights i just don't i am so sorry for hiccuping people i am very sorry i will try to get my voice under control <laughs> i'm i'm sorry i'm sorry mm. you all have to listen to this but um <laughs> no How just I feel most times we record uh, no, like seeing, you know, this old frail man uh, doing this thing that uh, honestly, it, it's not that impressive. But like because it's literally countering one of my greatest fears, it, it stands out. You. Yeah, no, like it's just that adds a sense of peril and danger to the situation mm-hmm. far beyond the possibility of getting caught. Like the idea of him getting caught never occurred to me, even as a child. What occurred to me is that old man could fall. Yeah. But it, it, it's from from a <laughs> technology standpoint, it's not hard to do those big chasm scenes. You you need a little bit of negative space to imply distance. But without before I had any understanding of how that works, that was that was real movie magic for me. That that took yeah. me to a different place. Star Wars is very good at that overall. Even the newer ones that I think are weaker films are very good at taking you somewhere. Yeah. Oh, the the scenery is the world just building. Fanta- yeah, the world building just fantastic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Now that we're getting to things that that we absolutely hate. Um, well, let's let's not use it that we dislike or like the least. Let's let's just use it at that. Because I, can use I don't the think word we all in a couple of instances. Yeah, but I don't think we can Mark use it on all Hamill's of them. line reading. <laughs> yeah. I despise <clears throat> Mark Hamill's dialogue delivery in like the first third of the film. I don't know chronologically how much of that what is Mark order. Hamill and how much of that was oh, George it, it Lucas' could be the dialogue. shitty it writing. It could be the dialogue. Mark <laughs> Hamill's a competent actor. That's that's not my point here. Um <laughs> <laughs> no, my point is shit like when he's talking with Obi-Wan and they're they're talking about like how uh the Empire's looking for the droids. Well, and that would lead them to home. Like it, it, that is like Captain Kirk level <coughs> acting. <laughs> and I, it's not to say that that type of acting doesn't have a uh, a place in my space opera, but uh I want that on the Starship Enterprise, not a galaxy far far away. Mm. Like it, it, it's not bad towards the ass half of the film, and I think it's because the dialogue gets very punchy once things actually start happening. Like all of it gets very truncated mm-hmm. in the last two thirds of the film. The first third is a just an onslaught of dialogue. If you really break down that movie, you've got like twenty minutes to a half hour that is straight up. Just the world being explained to you casually. Well, they kind of had yeah. to do an info dump. <coughs> but that that's what leads into the ass half of it being so good. Nobody yeah. really remembers yeah. the beginning. Everybody remembers the trench run, escaping the Death Star. They remember the punchy moments. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, but the, the... Blue milk. The weakest yeah. thing is just Luke's dialogue at the very, very beginning. It... It doesn't work. It doesn't even fit with the character in the long run. He's yeah. he's very weak and skittish, and that that's not Luke. Luke is inquisitive and exploratory. Like even in like the stories of him, he's nah. He's he's not the kid that's staying at home. He's the kid who's getting his speeder going out in bullseye womp rats. Like it, it it didn't it didn't fit with the performance we we received. Yeah. Mm, uh, that said, that. maybe if more of the cut uh, stuff had made the film, and I'm sorry for breaking the rule here, because it, uh, did, it didn't make the movie. It didn't make the uh, movie. Deleted, I don't think the deleted scenes are still part of the film. That counts. You can um, that. Theatrical <laughs> only. We, we have to have Well, all right, if we're going to do that, though, then what cut, though? Because then you can say, you know, do we count the special edition stuff or not the special edition stuff? It, the move, these okay, movies Alan. have been... One of my Parse favorite deleted pieces. scenes is <coughs> the scene it with uh, Jabba the Hutt. It, the original cut had a man named, and I really? again I think forget no matter his how first you, name. I think no matter but how Klan that's cut, was I think, brilliant. I think that mm. stops like the first act dead. Oh, in that's, its tracks, that's no why it got deleted. That's why it got deleted originally. Yeah. But 
no, I think it's we shouldn't game. include the things on the cutting floor if we are sticking to the trilogies as they were shown on screen only. Rule number two. The majority of the uh, viewers did not see the deleted the cut scenes content. and stuff. There are all of the, the fans did. But all of the Fairweather fans did the not. casual viewers. Oh. Yeah. I don't, so I don't think that's so big of a deal. I don't think it's so big of a deal, screen. but if you guys Rule don't want it, that's fine. Uh, the, if, we, if we start allowing that, we start opening various can- cans of I, 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 don't, I don't think that, that's actually a problem, but I, I'm clearly overruled here. So I, move if on. we have a discussion about the uh, construction of Luke's lightsaber for Return of the Jedi, it will create problems. Yep. Hmm. Well, and that's actually a decent segue into one of my biggest beefs with the first movie is the the lightsaber. And I know you guys have heard this a million is times. Is it because it's washed out or because it flickers? No, it's because... Okay, so here we have our hero oh, archetype oh, kid no. who is given an ancestral weapon, a <coughs> MacGuffin, the, one of... Admittedly, probably the coolest piece of technology we see in that movie, other than the star fighters and the but spaceships. But they got Death Star. Yeah, no, uh, cool stuff. But here is this archetypal, legendary weapon passed down from a wise mentor figure, a lost relic of his father who he doesn't know. And what do they do with it? He has one scene where he works with a robot and deflects a couple of bolts. And he never uses the damn thing again. It really bugs me that you give him this uh, theatrically legendary weapon and he doesn't even use the damn thing. They had to film another movie just so Luke could use his goddamn MacGuffin. You know what actually bugs the shit out of me more in that uh, whole whole sequence of events? It's a Chekhov's gun level thing. They never, oh, estab- yeah. they never established that Obi-Wan has one too. So when uh, he uh, has one for the uh, Vader fight, it's like, it's where the wait a minute, why does Luke from? still have, wait, <laughs> what? Yeah. Well, no, he uses it in the cantina. Yeah. He cuts uh, off the alien arm in the cantina. That could, it could <clears throat> still just be Luke's there, be like, we're going to a place that's dangerous. I know how to use that. Let me carry it while we're here. Aren't they different colors? No, no they're both they're blue. Both blue. Uh, originally, they were both white. The, the the actual yeah. paint over was white and the bluing was a retcon thing because of uh, uh, the nature of mm. theater lenses at the time applied a bluish tinge. Okay. It, it was it was a common construction thing at the time. Most lenses applied Uh-oh. a cooler aspect than what like a native fully clear lens. It was a cost saving mm. thing. It doesn't actually affect picture quality or anything. I I I, I but don't don't Obi Wan and Anakin have different colored blades in the prequel? No, no, they're both no. using blue. I could swear they were different no. colored blades. No, they're both Obi Wan and Qui Gon had different colored blades. Yeah, Qui Gon had green, but uh, I could swear they both had one of them nope, had green, the other one had, had blue. No, nope. uh, yeah. there are a couple times where Anakin gets thrown a random saber <clears> for <throat> reasons, and I believe there in the Geonosis fight. Yeah, I believe that on happens. Geonosis he has a green one, but I believe that's the only time. Mm. But that's very much because a couple of Jedi just chucked them a couple of sabers. Well, it's because his got destroyed on the assembly line, yeah. but we're getting exactly. way ahead of ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I was bitching about Behind the ourselves. failure of the use of Temporally uh, confused the about ourselves. Yeah. But, yeah, that's really my biggest beef with the first movie, is oh, the failure of right. Luke using the saber. That, well, is, that is a fair criticism. To, to your point, though, um, do we see enough of, the, of Obi-Wan's saber to be able to tell by the hilt that it's different? Probably, but I think so. Probably. So that's... There's no droids. <laughs> we can't look yeah. it up. Oh, oh yeah. 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 I, I think <coughs> I remember seeing enough of it that you can tell it's a different shape. Uh, at See, least... I'm, I'm almost positive they only had the one prop. I'm almost positive they only had the one saber prop for the first movie. I thought they had two props. That might well, be a obviously, special edition obviously thing the, they did the later. Well, obviously, the Vader rig and the hero rig, but to my understanding, right. that's what they had. Okay. They, they had oh. one that was just the prop hilt. They had one that you uh, attached the blade in, and there was a power cable going down your sleeve that uh, rotated a uh, stick that was two colors in order to be able to capture the movement. Oh. Um, 
and it was very 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 heavy mark hamill said it was like 30 pounds like it was fucking ridiculous trying to wave that thing around like if you've ever wondered why shit looks so clumsy in that very first movie those early fights it's because the tech was so clumsy. oh yeah no no it was it was very gorilla rigged in order to get it to work Mm. but yeah no to my understanding they they had like i believe it was two of the on the hip props and they uh for like the the hero units right they had one with the actual blade spinny bit Mm. Mm. because i i know there's very few uh use prop star uh lightsabers for the first film there there are considerably more for every single subsequent film mm. so what about you alan lay some hate on us <laughs> um <laughs> hate, hate, i don't hate, really hate, i hate. don't really hate any part of the original movie like or even necessarily dislike i think that movie it's is a pretty really co- good movie yeah, it's pretty yeah. consistent i'd say the part that i maybe disappointed you the part that doesn't excite me where it's like if i'm watching it I might like, you know, none, none that's necessarily. when you get up to go use the bathroom. Something like that would be pretty much any of the ce- the scenes between Luke and his aunt and uncle. Okay, yeah. Because it's basically just them <coughs> ex- <coughs> mildly expositing. Otherwise, like you said, it's Luke <coughs> complaining about not being able to go to the academy. Boohoo! It's that it's exposition slog eh. in the first third. Yeah, yeah. That the, the stuff there when he's interacting with the droids, it's, it's, it's fine. You know, or yeah, my, that, my take a piss scene is the trash <laughs> compactor. Really? Uh, uh, there's, I've seen it so many times that the stakes are completely non-existent mm, okay. to me in any way, shape, the, or form. Again, thing. I'll bring up the fact that through that entire scene, Luke had his lightsaber. <laughs> he could have cut through the goddamn door. <laughs> 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 I don't think I've ever thought of that before. He, he has it hanging on his belt through the entire goddamn scene. Yet another place <coughs> where he could have used this awesome <laughs> relic from it. I'm done. Dude, I'm done. he could have scared off the stormtroopers. They would have just right. been like, the fuck is that? Right. Uh, no, but my, my, my issue with the um, uh, with the trash compactor scene, especially at watching it on repeat, like yeah, C-3PO, it's, it, it's bad the C-3PO more you pisses it. me off where it's like, You've heard what's going on. Just shut the fuck up and tell R2 to do, to do what he needs to do, dude. Yeah, stop. Oh, my. Oh, dear. Just shut the fuck up They're and do dying, it. They're dying, R2. You're a goddamn droid. You should be able to process it like million operations per second. The delay shouldn't be necessary, oh, asshole. Uh, I, it really bugs me that the droids don't have any sort of, like, instant Wi-Fi radio communication. No, that uh. that wouldn't allow R two D two to stick his <laughs> digi dick in thing. Uh. <laughs> no, uh, that w- that makes <laughs> sense. But like for basic communication between two counterparts, as they are described throughout the series. That is where this comes. Well, he means between the droids. Between uh. the internal droids. comms and the droids. Because computers talking to computers <laughs> should be exceptionally faster than vocal communication. Yeah, but I, I think. For that, though, given this is a world where, like, they're afraid of, like, droids not making sure droids are not sentient and droids yeah. are basically slaves. I think you don't can, want the slaves no. being able to yeah, quietly talk to each other. I do get you can that. program to, like, have to think out loud and <laughs> shit. Yeah, you don't want... That, you don't. That's probably why uh, HK-47 called you Meatbag. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's not part of this discussion. Rule number one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, thing that any I'm talking more about. Hate? Or more hate. Do we have any more hate to spread? Uh, I mean, I, I already mm. kind of got into my issues with the uh, refilming or the redoing over and over of the Han shot first <laughs> thing, but I, that's I just, a, I feel they should have left it alone. I have a question for Carrie Fisher's estate for my, like, not not talked about often enough point. Yeah. Why was Princess Leia such a fucking cunt? I'm sorry, I know that word is hyper offensive to some people, but Leia was a goddamn cunt. Get this walking carpet out of my way. He just <laughs> saved your ass. He has feelings. To be fair, she was being tortured recently. 
True. So you you take it out on your rescuers? Mm. Uh, my weird question is, when Luke goes to let her out of the cell, he's dressed as a stormtrooper. What's Leia doing flirting with the stormtroopers? Leia had a plan to seduce a guard. <laughs> like, that, that's all I can think <coughs> of, but cut, it's a cut little to Jabba weird. slave barge. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a little weird the way that was uh, <laughs> filmed. She's flirting with a stormtrooper. Yes, it, it was very likely part of some sort of escape plan, but the way it's presented in the movie, she's just kind of flirting with a stormtrooper. Uh, I honestly feel well, it, I, I honestly believe that is a the, not this isn't like the writing, this is a post hoc justification knowing the series, but it's within the confines of the films. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. through the force, she knew that this isn't a threat. This isn't mm -hmm. this is not what it looks like. I, I do. I, do. She, yeah. she seemed to know uh, something. I well, I tend to think it's one one of two things. Either it's it's less her flirting and more her, more her just trying to mildly throw shade at a random short stormtrooper. A little bit. Or if she notices because she's seen enough of them that the armor doesn't fit properly, she knows that this isn't a stormtrooper. This is somebody wearing somebody else's stormtrooper armor. Oh this yeah, you you know what, they didn't. What the hell is going on here? You know they didn't like steal the pants with like all the mole that's yeah. actually holding the plating on. Like, yeah. So it's just a matter of literally. You're not a. You're clearly not a stormtrooper. Why are you wearing stormtrooper armor? And her first response is to flirt. <laughs> I don't see it as a flirtation. No, it's Stockholm it, syndrome. Mm. Yeah, no, uh, there's a I, lot of I, ways I to can believe that the Empire that. uses the prisons as brothels. Mm. I can fully believe that this was just like <laughs> the eighth stormtrooper today, mm. and she's like, are they sending the fucking rookies down here now? <laughs> uh, no, I mean, it's, is this your <clears throat> first day? I just don't see it as a flirtation. I don't think I've ever yeah. seen it that way myself, but. You know, I subjective don't know. I've, thing. I, I've met mean women at bars that <clears throat> flirted that way, where it. Uh, mm. I, I've had a woman <laughs> run their hand up my kilt, and you know what? It was very aggressive, and I wasn't sure how to process it <laughs> at the time. Uh. It, no <laughs> one prepares no, I, you I've for had that. that happen and no it's... one prepares you for it. The, that first time you are throws you off. taking a ghast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. <clears throat> All right. Um. So where where are we here? Uh. We were talking about things that are not often things, talked about. Things okay. that get buried in the discussion. Right. Uh, it, you can like it, you can dislike it, but a point that you always notice that gets lost somewhere in the mm. discussion of the film. Uh, and for me, it's just, Leia is a right? cold-hearted bitch, and it's literally never addressed. <laughs> she really doesn't get better <coughs> when they get to Dantooine either. She really doesn't. Yeah. All right. You mean Yavin 4? Sorry, Yavin 4. Yeah. But yeah, even even on Yavin, she's like, take your money. It's all you ever cared about. Well, like, she's she's never nice. True, but I think at that well, point she okay. just doesn't like him. Uh, yeah, admittedly, she's dealing with a mercenary pilot. Who she deals with mercenaries every day. Rebellion. Does and that's probably how she like deals it? with them. I don't know. It's a guy she's never met before. More flash just with honey up. than vinegar. And I feel this is really proved in Empire. Mm. I, I think that's just consistently her character. But may, that might be my knowledge of like so, I know some of the books I've read seeping into the discussion because I've seen her in other stuff before. Rule number and that's, one. That Films might be only. influencing. Films only. Yeah, well, I'm just saying, I'm acknowledging that might be influencing oh, my... Well, and I'm definitely acknowledging your acknowledgement by, and then yeah. reminding you. Oh, no, I'm, I'm, not, no. Well, I'm, not, I'm not bringing up that to defend any of my points. I'm merely... Okay. Well, and I will admit that the things I've read in the Expanded Universe tinge the way I feel about the films, <laughs> too. We can't help True. it. True, yeah. Um, but, um... Right, one, one I've got that I... I've always kind of been like, hmm? With is um, what happens to Owen, Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru? Like anytime, the, any other when time you see, 
What is unclear burned. about that? Well, no, no, it's like any, t- any other time we, you see we people see get bl- the wreckage. What was unclear well, about no, this? Well, let me explain. Maybe. <laughs> any other time, any like any other time you see somebody get nailed with a blaster shot, they just get blastered and there's a burn or whatever on their thing. It's the only time it's these random two people who they have no personal grudge against. They just they're just witnesses that need to be eliminated. And they're just charred to a crisp. Oh, I... Like, were these, like, s- sadistic stormtroopers they sent after him who were just like... <laughs> uh, there's, um, there's an expanded canon discussion about this. I personally fall into the camp that I uh, believe Vader specifically ordered their brutal execution. And I that will is, point out that... That is an accelerant poured mm. on them on purpose by stormtroopers. I will point out that Anakin met them both <laughs> in episode two. So he does know True. Odin Baru. I mean, and if he found out that they somehow got the plans and the droids that they're looking for, yeah. I can see Vader going I'm full. I'm sorry, but I don't think he. I don't to, think he ever figured out it was them. At least right away, it was them. To me, to me, it's it's the uh, Lord Vader moment. says it's now okay to laugh at the little orphan Annie joke. To me, that is what happened. I don't. I see. I don't think there's any evidence in the again, in the movies. Terrible. That prior to Empire, there's there's also an external theory supported by Empire, and and I'm I'm only bringing this up because it's directly supported by Empire, and I'm very <laughs> sorry for this. It is a clear violation of the rules, and I will take my licks for this. I d- Bonk. I'm gonna wait until he actually breaks the rule, <laughs> so I know how how much I preemptively. I, I, so how uh, I know how hard to hit him. There, there is a theory that uh, Boba Fett was operating on Tatooine at the time, which is seen via the deleted scene, including Jabba. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. That uh, that was contracted out to local bounty hunters, and that was. Uh, uh, Boba getting overzealous with detonators, which is why he has Says to tell no, no disintegrations, disintegrations in the and next movie. And specifically <clears throat> looks at Fett when he says it in Empire. It it is directly supported by Empire, but that is the only True. supporting evidence. Yeah, well, and, then, uh, and that's the uh, theory. And it does yeah. make sense because <clears throat> in the we, job of the we, we established scene, everything I do used know for he's that there. is outside of our. Realm yeah. of conjecture, well, but the, simply for the, the talking way, point you brought. The way I see it, though, the way the way I see it, the evidence is, Vader sends him down there. I'm to, really sorry. I need to get water. Or some I'm burping really bad. Grab me another beer from the fridge. Yeah, while yeah, you're in I there. got you. You guys uh, just keep going. I'm so okay. sorry about this. No, not a problem. Well, way, way I see it is, Vader sends him down there to retri- to retrieve the droids. He doesn't know where they are, where they're going. Right. They get there. They find the Jawas. They ask the Jawas, who'd you sell them to? The Larses. The Stormtroopers don't know that these people mean anything to Lord Vader. So they immediately go quickly because they're trying to get the droids as quickly as possible. They go. They they get the droids. Or they go, don't find the droids. Kill they them. kill them. And move on. But why do they Luke, burn them? They yeah, do, that uh, is a serious there is question. N- there is no time between when that happens, when they find out that it's the Larses who had the droids, and then, you know, uh, and then Luke getting back to see the corpses. I don't think there's enough time there for Vader to properly find out yeah. and put the pieces together in order them to destroy the bodies. Yeah. No, I definitely have to agree with you. There's no real reason why Vader would have been personally involved in that. I think... Um, although I do like the idea that Nick brought up of the idea that this is where the whole no disintegrations thing come from. This was th- this was Bobby F- Boba Fett uh, told to go and kill them and retrieve the droids, is, and he just disintegrated is them. Is Boba Fett in the, in the version of the scene that ends up in the special edition? Yes. He is all right. So that that, that still t- uh, yeah. counts as the movie. Uh, he is in the background there behind CGI. Yeah. Uh, special Java. edition counts. So yes. that's still in the movie. It is in the movie now. Yes. Right. So yes, he is on planet at that time, and we know that Vader likes to hire bounty hunters. True, for things. but but all the evidence is that it was stormtroopers who took them but out. Why would stormtroopers burn the bodies or disintegrate yeah, them? Which is, which it is, makes no sense. Which is why I ask the question. Yes. The timeline doesn't fit up for it to be anything other than stormtroopers came across two random people. Thank you. Who were witnesses that needed to be eliminated, and for some reason, 
you know, decided to do that. Either that or for some reason the two of them were wearing really flammable clothing. I have a hard yeah. time believing anything going on on Tatooine <laughs> isn't going to raise the suspicions in I or a Vader. There's not enough time, though, between when, when the stormtroopers would have gotten there and when Luke goes, gets back to find the bodies. I don't think there's enough time there for them to report the name of the people who had them to Vader because at this point they're still looking for the droids and they don't know Vader cares about well, these with people. with their comms, that's as simple as making a I phone call. I think you're call. really underestimating the Empire here. And if... if I, I, think they, I think they're more concerned about getting the droids as quickly as possible because that's the thing they've been tasked to do. And I don't think the names of the two random villagers are going to be reported. They'd say there was two random I moisture think, farmers. I think you're really underestimating how ruled by bureaucracy this age of the Empire is. Uh, you know what, what mine is for the untalked <coughs> about weird thing that's always kind of irked me? Um, <laughs> well, not not so much irked, but it, it raised some questions. The, the scene with uh, when they're pulling into Moss Eisley and they're talking to the group of stormtroopers mm -hmm. and uh, you can see there's <coughs> multiple stormtroopers around when he uses the force to cloud the mind of the one he's talking to why does it, why don't any of the others pipe up with uh, are you feeling okay fred i mean like there's clearly two droids here like it, that yes. is a good yeah. fucking quest. I there are other stormtroopers there. He there clouds are, the mind of the one he's talking there to. Are two Did he do a mass mind cloud? Yeah, well, it, the, it's possible. There are two possible explanations for that, as I see it. Um, the one you just posited is he mind affected all of them to just, you know. Which is possible with what we yeah. see in the prequel trilogies and Power of the Force and blah, blah, he, blah. He is a Jedi master. Yes. You know, at this point, he if anybody's got the he ability to do it, of it, he would be capable of doing it. The other one, and it might this might be a combination of these two, um, because it would mean he would have to do less influence on the others than he did the main one. And there's the fact that the guy who the guy that they're, who's in charge there is the guy in charge, and it's the Empire. Yeah. And it might be a case of he's like the sergeant, and the rest are privates. Depending or something on like that. depending he's on the, the one with the rank. Yeah, depending on the exact relationship that dynamic there between that squad leader and his squad, they might just be like, "I'm not getting involved." Whatever, boss said it. Yeah, and yeah, that is also reason. another uh, possibility. But it's always kind of made me raise an eyebrow when I see that scene because it's like, seriously, nobody else is like. <laughs> boss is letting him through yeah like you'd think somebody would have been like uh sarge you sure on that i've still never understood why they didn't fire on the unoccupied escape pod oh yeah no like yeah it, they uh, shoot Seth lasers you was don't... on to some shit where he's like what are we be, are we uh paying by the laser now you do the budget terry i do all right well number one my minor, viol my minor possible violation of the rules in new canon, it's basically that. He actually tried to go new canon. I was simply making a joke. But you used it talking about things I'm, outside of the U.S. I'm simply oh, pointing out the irony that you're... My one. Seth MacFarlane is expanded <laughs> canon, expanded universe well, now in some well, way. Now you've acknowledged it, too. True. No, I am telling you why you broke the rule. Well, from my perspective, the Jedi are evil. All right, I think we need. From my perspective, <laughs> all right, I let's think we face it, you're pretty evil. Hold on, I think we need a clarification of rule one here. <laughs> you cannot all use. Right, all right, all right, all right. Before we get any further, everyone turn them off and put them <laughs> down. Right. Technically, it was a violation of rule number two. Because he was talking about something we didn't see in the trilogy. Well, we see screen. no expanding. Yeah. They're basically the same rule. Uh, yes. But anyways. Well, we, we do see the control room and them having the whole discussion about it. there's no life signs aboard. But anyways. Yeah, it's curious that they clarification don't Clarification on the rule, though. You can't use anything from the expanded universe to justify an opinion or an answer. You are not prohibited from actually verbally acknowledging, sta acknowledging their existence. Their existence. Okay. Yes. Okay. You want to make make the point of, you know, yeah, they don't answer this in the movie, but they actually do say that, or <laughs> like where he actually basically makes a joke, guessing yes. at the fact that that's what they say, 
in the expanded universe? Well, I point that out. He did preface that joke with, I like Seth MacFarlane's reasoning for this, and then made the joke to explain his yeah. reasoning. Igno- acknowledging but, it is one thing. The, the yeah. point is to not keep, get us bogged down where, well, in Legends they say this, but in New Canon they say this. Well, that doesn't matter because that sucks. Yes, it was That's to prevent point. that argument. Yeah. I think that was him tacitly accepting our argument about New Canon. High five. No, no, it wasn't. Okay. Um, I'm willing to burn my point of view on this one. He gets one. <laughs> no, I'm just preparing for the, the oh, inevitable okay. fight. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> well, I think that kind of wraps yeah. up the original well, movie. I, and well, well, you guys I think, have I think anything that, more to say. Well, I think with that clarification of the rules, we're ready to suck some Dak in Empire. Yeah. One, one other thing I want to mention, because I didn't put it in my favorites, but it's something I think is... It gets mentioned a lot, but it's, it's one of the coolest things in Star Wars, and that is the opening shot. And I don't yes. just mean the crawl. I mean the thing with the Star Destroyer, the, the ship, and then the Star Destroyer yep. coming in. When, my, when you've never seen a Star Destroyer before, is and the, it's so cool. Yeah, the very first shot you see is in the uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yep. Which I still, yep. I have the older cut now, and I still have not gone back to, to go, look. You need to go home and check that. I have got to yeah. check that. I know that I have the VHS. It, it was the 1976... <laughs> Playboy cover, oh, I believe. I don't know <laughs> what it ultimately... I know it was a Playboy spread, though. Yeah. But in any case, we move on to the ice planet of Hoth. Empire on ice! <laughs> Empire on ice! Here we are! Here it's the Empire, Empire on ice! ice. Something, 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 something no, we're, we're not very nice! nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, so Nick. Chewbacca Seth had life. Is a genius. That's not my fault. <laughs> Nick, favorite moment in Empire. Uh, or thing from Empire. See, Empire is actually hard on me because I didn't like Empire as a kid, and it aged weirdly with me. There's parts of it that are exceptionally good. There are parts of it that are e- <coughs> exceptionally bad yeah and there are some things that got changed and the in between the changes is where the right answer always was like uh, for for me my favorite part it, it this again comes back to a thing about atmosphere but cloud city in the original cut of the movie the non-special edition it's very tight in and claustrophobic. In, in the special editions, there's a bunch of CGI where they, they have uh, open windows and the city's much more open. And it's more colorful and vibrant and mm-hmm. lively. Originally, yep. it was just a bunch of hallways. Yeah. That's just Dark it. Those, those hallways made it feel more industrial to me. Yep. This, this was a resource mining station. Oh, yeah, I never got the feeling like, it, of opulence from the original movies. Yeah, like, it it made more sense to me. And the few, the few nice areas in Coruscant that we saw, the areas that Lando himself had direct control over, the you housing mean that... Bespin. Sorry, yeah. Bespin. Cloud what City. did I say? You Coruscant. said Coruscant. I am no, he said Coruscant. Coruscant. I, I am so sorry. I am so sorry for that. Yes, <coughs> Bespin Cloud City. Are we sure you're not drinking my beer? No, nah, that's water. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, like it, the the special editions, it's too busy. It's too much. The original, it, it felt more isolating, more alone. The the only comfort came at the behest and at the hand of Lando Calrissian. Yep. And the, you learn that very one co- room you see and was you, the only opulence you, you saw learn, in the entire thing. And you learn very, very quickly that all of this comfort that Lando offers is fruit of the poison tree. Yep. But it's there's a lot of power in that, and some of that messaging for me gets lost when you paste over. See, like the, it, the Empire is really hard for me. See, I'm the exact opposite with that. I like it better with the special editions for the exact, basically the inverse reasons. Aesthetically, I don't like the closed-in look. It looks overly simple, yeah. and it's kind of bland. For, to, 
to, to I be like clear, the, the to more be clear, lively. What I like, what I like is Cloud City. To be clear, yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, we were supposed to be doing what we liked, and we kind of yeah. spun down well, to problems. Like, like I said, <laughs> Empire's really hard for me. Well, yeah. you can always just take the cop out and, and do the obvious one. Well, uh, I was gonna end the, big, up the with single that. biggest moment and most the, famous moment in Star the Wars, most iconic moment in Star Wars, where he gets his oh, hand I, cut off, and it's. I am your father. I actually <laughs> stop giving a shit about five minutes before that fight every time I watch Empire. Really? The, really? Ti- the timing in that movie does not agree with me. Mm. Fair like enough. Like I said, Empire is really hard for me. There are some things Empire does exceptionally. There really are. And it is a very good movie. And then there are some things it does where it just mm. falls flat on its face. Well, name one of those exceptional things. One of those exceptional things is Cloud City. Uh, the Cloud City in the original. <laughs> I, okay. I really like Cloud City. It it, uh. it felt real. <coughs> you you saw enough of it to be like, okay, no, there's there's habitation where people are just living. You saw enough to see that there was some sort of waste management going on locally, where it's like, okay, they're recycling physical components because you know you're the ass and nowhere it's hard to get things. <laughs> like all of it felt very real very contained mm. it was good it was done well mm. i will point out that's the first time you see like real what we would consider civilization because before that you see tatooine shithole you saw death star military you saw hoth military this is our Alderaan, real military first taste. this was the first taste of what civilization actually was this was <coughs> About uh, th- not True. even just in civilization, industry uh, that too. They're yeah. they're trying. They were a small outpost avoiding interference from the mining guilds. True, yep. but see, I, I I take that same point and I go in the other direction with it. It's it's not cloud mining base. It's cloud city. It's an actual city. It should feel you ever like heard a of city. Hell on wheels. The show? No, the the historic city. Oh no. The, the show is named and loosely based off of what actually happened. It was a railroad construction company that laid tracks going west, and they literally had a town with a population of just over 1,000 as permanent residents mm-hmm. on this project. And, like, every few months, they would just pack up the entire town and, and move, move it. it down the rail lines that they had yeah. laid over the past few months. All right, well, yep. but th- and and but they, they, they called it Hell on Wheels because, well, a lot of people died. Yeah, well, but, but like, like he, w- he made the point of, it's our first taste of real civilization, of, of actual technology and all that. It's not, it's not Mos Eisley's, right? It's not a hive of scum and villainy, although it's run by a scummy well, villain. But um, There's a well, lot of arg- room for argument there about It's a city. They call Lando's it a city, actions. not a town, not an outpost. It's Cloud City, and it's big. It looks big. It should we only fe- see a small I like part when of it, it in the newer part where it feels more like a city. It feels like a city where they just happen to do mining because you wouldn't just have the miners. You have you have all the all the support the people, staff, no, the people yeah. that feed them, the people that clean up. No, after but I them. see yes. the I see, wives, very, the I see it very much as a company town where whoever's paying to bring in what they're lacking oh, is it getting that money was from a the company resources. town, but it was also yeah. a city. Mm-hmm. I'm, not, I'm not saying that there were no <clears> other <throat> local industries. I'm saying. One industry fed the others. Oh, true, true. But my point, my point is, the people who are living there are still gonna, you know, um, if it's big enough to be a city, there'll be some level of um, of amenity to it, I, or at least there should be. I, I at least I like that image of it more than I like the image you get. You know what? Part I, I really you could do like both. I what, just like the one more what, than what, the other. What was what was your favorite part of Empire? I think my high point in the movie, aside from the lightsaber fight, which finally got Luke swinging a lightsaber, but my favorite <laughs> part is actually the uh, <clears throat> battle on Hoth with the that speeders and yeah. the first good. time you see the ATAT tanks and the fucking camel walkers. I absolutely love the walkers, <laughs> but. <laughs> this is our first time we've seen what land battle looks like in Star Wars. Before that, you saw a prison breakout s- scenario and a space battle. This is the first time we get to see land battle. And with the walkers and the speeder planes and bikes and the the ingenious use of the tow cable. And I just love that whole thing. 
I think my my favorite part of Empire, because again, I, I generally hold with the 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 popular opinion that Empire is probably the best of the three. That's generally what. It's I a think, close. One. It's a it close has, battle between that and and, and a New Hope. It's but I, strong moments. I think are the strongest <laughs> of the franchise. But again. I feel there are some real detractors. Yeah. Lucas has a real talent at the whole darkest before dawn thing. He has a real talent at making things so progressively worse until the heroes finally oh, I, break through. I have and issues with wasted time on screen. Like, well, mm. but the, the <laughs> whole ending to uh, Empire is that quintessential darkest before dawn empire is a very good is a good example of that i think i wouldn't say that about all three trilogies because i don't think the balance is the same in all three movies empire here well you made a point about him doing that as a general thing lucas is good at it i i'm saying i think he's good at it here he did an excellent job in the first movie of it i think that has more to do with the fact that he didn't direct empire but i digress that that is a valid point um yeah, the, the director but of Empire it, was just a phenomenal man. I'm forgetting his name, but he, he, he Kasdan. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, James Kasdan. I think. Mm. Ka- I know his last name's Kasdan, but but uh, no, my favorite thing isn't one moment specifically. It's um, because it's I I, I don't th- again I don't think it's a part of that movie I don't like. Um, I, th- I think maybe like, you know, the the lights, some parts of the lightsaber battle are a little slow. There's a little, there's a little well, too much downtime. Again, but they they had cut the uh, weight of the lightsaber rigs, and to my understanding, it was no longer the spinny job in them to mm-hmm. uh, track the movement. But they were still pretty heavy. They were still pretty clunky, and you still couldn't like full force swing them. Th- that fight was still hyper choreographed. Yeah. Oh yeah. The, well, well, they we, all are. Is this is my favorite movie for Darth Vader as a character? Yes, it is very good for develop for developing Vader. He just everything he does, everything we see of him, uh, anything from you know him force choking out the two guys to, to his just interactions his, with the bounty hunters. To yeah, to the the pod the thing with the pod, and you see the helmet when the helmet's oh, partially yeah, off. You get that glimpse scene. of him under the helmet. To the reveal, and all of a sudden, just adding that to his character of, all right, well, now we know he's he ain't as loyal to the Emperor as he Before seems this, to be. Before this, all we knew was, was a mysterious, and, villainous lackey of so, some higher power. He's not a robot. Yeah. yeah right. Uh, that was there a, is a person theory under there. during the original is they thought he was a, he was a droid. Yeah. Uh, people coming out of the first thought movie that. thought he was a droid like 3PO or R2. <coughs> that, that was a super popular theory at the time, and justifications were for like Robot the boys. sand crawlers All scene the in the background, the like insectoid headed protocol droid in the right. background being yep. like, well, his mask isn't so different from that, really. Well. Yeah. Well. It was a serious theory at the time, and one that uh, Empire shot down quite effectively. Yeah. But, yeah, that whole reveal thing, All you're right, was d- really cool. <coughs> and that's just it. Very little is actually revealed about him. You don't see his face. Yeah. You see enough to know he's human. I think that's the strongest part of the character that they complete. Uh, that's new trilogy. We'll get to that. Oh, yeah. or, and just even, like, the thing with him and the pot he's in, when yeah. it opens so up and cool. he turns around. That thing's it's, so it's, cool. It's, so thro- it's like, thrown-like almost. Oh, yeah. It you know, totally is. You well, know, it's, it's and you get, so you get that vibe from him. It, it, symbolically, it's meant to represent <laughs> his power over the others. Yeah. It's meant to be imposing. It's <laughs> it's meant to make the audience feel yeah. imposed upon, well, and it works. W- yep. well, well, simultaneously being an embodiment of his greatest weakness. Yeah. The fact that he's got, he has, has all that mechanical uh, parts to him. Well, no. He's king inside of his own world. Inside of that pod, yeah. he does not need the mask. He needs no assistance. Yeah. But outside, he is subservient to the Empire. Yeah. But like, like, you know, like you said, though, it, it's, while simultaneously being an embodiment of his weakness, it's designed in a way to portray strength, turning a weakness into a strength. Right. Uh, the, it, like a lot, most of like, the Sith etymology was wrote post hoc. 
Uh. It was a word that got thrown around, and then somebody else came up with rules for it. Yeah. Yeah. But with what ultimately (coughs) shook loose, Vader's chamber is as Sith as it goddamn Mm. gets. Power through pain. Yeah. Fuck. Yep. Yeah. Although that's getting a little into rule one territory, so let's uh, yeah shift away from there. True, but <coughs> um, all right. So I think we're gonna do dislikes. This is this is gonna be controversial, <laughs> but th- there's there's a lot of things I don't like. But the thing I think is the most egregious because I think I think it's the dumbest and the most <laughs> insulting to the audience. And, and there's there's a lot of moments that are insulting to the audience, like just breath masks on the interior of the asteroid when they step out yeah. of the box. That's insulting as shit, and I don't know why that flies. I don't know. Because they're inside a, inside a life form. I don't accept this. I don't accept <laughs> this. I don't, I don't care. I've heard this. Yeah, it's going to be seeping gases inside, and eventually those gases are going to run out, and how long has Nick, you've broken rule week? number six. Not the it's, a di- it's an internal digestive tract. There would be, there would be you gases You just played the high ground that you were right and every other option is You wrong. did do that. Yeah, you really did do that. Bonk. Are we, are we punishing him or knighting <laughs> him? I'm not sure. <laughs> no, no disintegration. <laughs> I, I don't have a Padawan braid to cut off. Um, <laughs> no, but like the, the thing that I think is the most egregious... As I call out Princess Leia for being a bitch in the first movie, (laughs) Han Solo on the platform about to be frozen. I love you. Baby, I know it. (laughs) Okay, uh, can we just for a moment talk about how great that imagery of the two of them fighting a lover's quarrel in the middle of an icy hallway. I mean, how much more metaphorical can you get than that? Yeah. That argument on Hoth was just, <laughs> it defined how their relationship been was gripping, always going to be. She could have uh, been gripping Han's balls <laughs> with kung fu grip. <laughs> uh, Squee! Uh, I, I do, overall, I, I do like the, the, the dynamic between the two of them in this movie. And just throughout uh, the no, trilogy over, as a whole. Overall, it is very, yeah. very cat and mouse. But that is so brick wall at a moment where flat out, flat out, Han thinks he's dead. Let's be really yeah. fucking honest here. Oh, yeah. It- Han's being <sighs> taken to Jabba after being frozen in an industrial carbonite yeah, freezer. Let's it's out. not the carbonite, carbonite freezing is not impossible. Supp- <laughs> it's that it's an industrial <laughs> facility. Lando points out, this is not made to do this. Yes. Yeah, th- there are oh, reasons Mandalorian bugs me, but well, we're not talking which about like, that. I, I still think it fits him, though, because I think it fits the character. Han Solo wouldn't say, I, I love you. No, I... I because disagree. that's how he says, okay, I love you, because he knows he, here's knows, why, he knows him. Here's why I disagree. Han is only resistant when Leia is resistant. Han puts a mirror to Leia, and that's how he wins her over. When Leia's, you know, rearing up as hard as she can, Han comes in <coughs> and rears up next to her in sort of a parody so that she can see how foolish she's being. That's why when she gets called out uh, in the medical bay after uh, Han and Luke get back from the night in the Tauntaun. And <laughs> the she- night in the Tauntaun. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. an <laughs> RP I'd read. Yeah, and Han <laughs> is basically pointing out, you're kind of being a bitch right now, and she has to accept <laughs> You know what I am, but I can't let you win. So she kisses Luke to get that last little little blow One in, on him. Oh. and then moves on because Han showed her what the the way to to end that, and that she wasn't win. Like they they always played off of each other before that, and any time that she leaned into Han positively, like when they're repairing the ship, and you know talking about how like, well my hands are dirty too, mm-hmm. like. It, Whenever they're on the same page, they mm-hmm. are on the same page. Yeah. yeah. And the page that it took forever to get Leia to <laughs> was, I love you. Han was already there. Han was there on Hoth. Han didn't want to leave to take care of his bounty. Yeah, but I think he's on the same page. I think when he says, I know, that's his way of saying, of saying I love you, and he knows that she'll 
register, uh, you know, register it as that. I it's, always it's saw a that kind of as wink and a nod to her of like, I, you know, I, you know, I love you. You I, know, I, I love you. I honestly feel something more along the lines of I always loved you. Something where it, it I just don't get that vibe from Han Solo. I get especially the, with other people in the room. Only, only with her. That's just it. Like I, I don't see that chemistry anywhere. Else. If he, w- if, if, if they were was, alone, if, if, maybe if that that tone for like the last thing he says to Chewie, absolutely, because him and Chewie continually have a relationship built upon challenging one another. <coughs> so at that point, the whole yeah, I know. That tracks with them. Oh, God, that reminds me of That's, one of my bigger gripes with the original movie. My, my, my issue here, and this, this, is, this is a bit of a chauvinistic view, and I <coughs> will cop to the fact that this is a little old-fashioned and backwards. He talks to Leia like she's his uh, best drinking friend, but talks to Chewie like Chewie's his lover as he's going down. Like the last thing, the last serious thing he says is to Chewie, and it's <laughs> you protect her. Like it, <clears throat> you went serious for the one that you 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 know, even if you fuck up, is with you. That's just how their dynamics were. It, well, no, that's just that's it. how I Han's t- dynamic with each of those t- characters were. And I he felt was it's very I felt close completely to flipped in that moment. Well, I, 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 I feel think it should I think have been was, the like, other way because him okay. and Chewie. Are always that's their neutral is that type of dynamic. That's how he's telling Chewie that this is a serious moment because they're never Leia. serious with each other. So this is that moment with Leia, Han, and Leia. They get in when they're in those in that, that kind of bantery thing. That's when they're being flirty, when they're being romantic or whatever. So that that is their romantic dynamic. If he would have just been straight with her, that wouldn't it would have it would have fallen flat. I think that would have fallen flat. It would have been bland. That's 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 not just him saying I love you. That's saying, you know, you know me and you know that I love you and this is us. I this I is feel, us. I feel that I feel that scene goes through a lot of tonal shifts, and it does them very quickly. I'm not saying that it (coughs) fails at any of them. Mm. I'm not saying that what is on the screen lacks impact, because it clearly does. The the voraciousness of your defense of it clearly shows that it left an impact, a very lasting one at that. Mm -hmm. I think it could have been done differently within the exact same confines and been a more powerful and more serious moment. I feel the rapid shifts over the course of the scene <coughs> i feel it takes you out of it a little right. like it just just on an information level you get a lot in that scene just out just between lando and vader just to even understand yeah. what's going on mm-hmm. there is a lot going on for like what three four minutes of screen time total something like yeah. that yeah uh, it's a very rapidly <coughs> changing uh scene let, let me ask you this does your opinion of that change any when you put it into the context of the reciprocal moment in, in, in Jedi. When 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 he says I love you and Leia comes back with I know. Did the two of them together change that? I'm I'm gonna say I'm going to stick to my guns here and here's why. Because my whole argument here revolves around <laughs> consistency of character, not development or growth of character, but rather the mm-hmm. the indelible <coughs> qualities of them. <coughs> when Leia pulls that line in uh, uh, Return of the Jedi, I feel that's a purposeful nod and a wink. I don't I don't really feel that's a romantic deal between them i feel that's that's leia reverting to the ball busting bitch that is her character it's the worst in the first movie but she is always snappy like you were pointing out icy bitch in a hallway (laughs) yeah (laughs) no it it's definitely the way her character is she's yeah, I, always I, been prickly and uh like I, I i don't really feel that's that's returning the line i recognize that from a narrative standpoint yes it is returning the line but from like an internal consistency and in character motivation I, I don't think so i think i was just leia 
I, I think that's the part of Leia Han's attracted to. Well, yeah, I, th- well, well, I think that's why it's romantic. He likes a challenge. It's, it's, I mean, maybe not like, you know, you know, deep, you know, poetry level, like rom- romance, but there's certainly a, a play, more playful sexual expression going on there because – you know, I will she, say this: the, the the only time I've been aware of the phenomenon you're describing with the reciprocal delivery of the line is outside of the context of the movies when people are pointing out the similarities across the movies. It has never stood out to me when watching them. Never. Really? Yes. Uh, a lot that, of her, that could just be a deficiency on my end, but literally, it has never stood out to me. I do yeah. have to agree with Nick. A lot of her character development happened in the Legends universe and the books, things like that, which we are not talking about here or applying. Mm. Yes, you and I have both read a lot of stuff where well, they've developed <laughs> Leia externally, but in the movies themselves, you don't really get the sense of that. She's well, mostly a bitch, but. She can she's, be, she's but very, she's, she's a, a bit very, volatile she's a throughout go- the movies. Well, I, I say bitch because I refer to my mother and sister by the terms bitch. I don't mean them as an incendiary thing. That that just means, no, you've got an attitude. You tell people Cranky. how life's going to well, be. Yeah, no. Yeah. You assert your values over others forcefully. Well, okay, she bitch. was a senator. <laughs> That that is a valid thing. I mean, I mean, that is part of her character. That, that broke me more than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? What well, broke the movie for me? That I mean, my dislike or whatever. It was actually the Tauntaun scene. He, What's your issue with it? I, there's I, no blood. I'm when the guts okay spill that. out, they, no, they're I'm, tubes, but there's no blood. I'm actually okay with that. It always bugged bugs me and it breaks the, it breaks the um, immersion for me in the movie every single time <laughs> there are some arctic animals that have a layer of fat thick enough that you can genuinely cut multiple inches into their body before you actually hit a blood source he eviscerated of this thing there should have been blood and it breaks I mean, it for me also every time. i'm <laughs> telling you there's ways to get into animals where you dodge large blood flow yeah also he did it with a lightsaber which cauterized yeah him. i was gonna say that yeah also, that part of your body does not have as many blood vessels. It's and not like if you had cut into its like neck or something like that, uh, then all right, there are major, yeah, no yeah. cauterization is going to stop that. Yeah, yeah. but there's at still that a part, pumping hard on one yeah. end of that seal. Yeah, I know. It, it just bugs me that he cuts Pressure it open builds. and guts <laughs> spill out, stomach and intestines spill out. But there's no blood. Anyone and it else, just anyone else ever think it just looked like fingers of latex gloves filled with water when you were a kid? Um, I thought it looked like a whole bunch of latex gloves, like water ballooned out, layered on top of each other so that the fingers would poke out. Because it, it was always like what these it was. tube structures. That's essentially what it was, but it was tubes filled with uh, liquid of some kind, <laughs> maybe water. Mm. But... <clears throat> Yeah, that that's my little tauntaun. That was really the tauntaun. only disappointment for me in the movie. Mm. I mean, I, I thought the things with the bounty hunters were cool. I loved the battle on Hoth. I well, liked to that city. To that, I say I'll see you in hell. <laughs> I like the tauntaun scene. Yeah, I'm fine. I thought they smelled <coughs> bad on the outside, and that's my takeaway. Oh no, uh, the humor's great. The scene as a whole works. It. Uh, that that is the one point in the movie where I lose my immersion every single time. Maybe it's just me. Uh, I will say, not for the movie itself, but one of the things I really dislike about the fan base when it comes to this movie is a lot of people are really nope, hard nope, on Lando. No, no, no. We're talking about the movies, not the fan base. Yeah, that's that's nice. Okay, fair. Oh, uh, that's that's. I will I take the ball. The only one to get hit. No, no, uh, <laughs> that is fair. Uh, I will yeah. talk about my issues with the way Lando's treated in another time. Oh, you mean it's the only black man in the universe, even though he's uh, uh oh, it's it's an island. Puerto Rican. Yes, thank you. No. I w- I was more talking about how his double triple cross on Cloud City ca- comes across, but. 
I firmly believe that Lando tried to warn Han away before he made it to the platform, but that's getting into various theories and things like uh, that. Those are theories <laughs> that are contained within the film, though. That's not... Yeah. yeah. Uh, I believe that having his pilot shoot at the Falcon, the way he greets him on the platform at first kind of cold and uh, whatnot, and then that weird immediate mm-hmm. switch to, hey, buddy... I think that yeah, was the, all trying to give him some subtle sign that you need to get the fuck yeah, no, out of the, here. The second the reaction is confusion, mm-hmm. not picking up the signs. It, yeah. Lando's not doubling down on a bad hand. Yeah, like I to, to stick to a gambling analogy. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think Lando was trying to cross Han. I think he was in a really bad position. And he tried giving Han signs, and Han just didn't pick it up. See, I disagree because I think it's inc- I think that would be inconsistent with Lando's character, given what's going on there. I don't think he because at that point the Empire is there. He now has to choose between because the original deal was it was just going to be Han, right? Chewie and Leia yes. were going to stay in the city. Yes, so because this thinks, deal keeps getting worse all the time. Right, yes. right, right. So he only thinks Han. That's the only person on on the line here, right? Yeah, his old drinking buddy. Okay, he has to choose between, you know, obviously Leia and who he doesn't know, but Chewie, who he certainly knows, right, and everybody he knows on Cloud City. He's trying to protect Cloud City, and not for himself and everybody Cloud on City. Cloud City, or Han. Yeah. And I totally think he hates doing it, and he, he's going to look for a way out of it, you know, possibly, but I don't think he's going to risk all that just to save Han. I well, don't think he'd and do it. he doesn't end up doing that, and you that's know, why it plays well, out the way Because it does. if he warns him off, though... I disagree with that. The, the deal falls through, and I think if he If Han gets, makes a choice based on his own actions, Lando can't be held accountable. Okay, here's, here's why the, I disagree with that, and it's completely outside of the, the explanation you've given so far. Despite having to protect all those people from the Empire... Lando knows the Empire and how they operate. Cloud City's burned. He is not getting it back. He knows this. He's fighting for the waning days of control in order to try and ensure as many people can get out as can. But he knows this is done. If he, yeah. could, have, if he could have scared Han off, that would have bought him enough time to get his people out, no issue. And he could have just carried on normal business. Having to give over Han, that's going to accelerate shit. Because once the Empire has Han, they don't need this place as a trap anymore. And they can just seize it the way they seize everything. The one see, I really I see the feel exact, bad for is the ice cream I, man. I see the best the, ice cream on Cloud City. I, it, I see the was, exact opposite. He was so prepared to ditch at the end of the movie. And I believe it's because he already viewed it as a foregone conclusion. Well, if he already sees it as, as a foregone conclusion he, and he wants to stall, then chasing Han away is the exact wrong thing to do. Because as long as Han is, uh, you know, there and they're doing doing stuff with Han on the thing, that gives him the time to start doing I stuff. Disagree. The minute Han goes away. The Empire now has. The Empire's hands are only tied so long as Cloud City serves as an effective trap. It only serves as an effective trap as long as the Empire remains invisible. Yeah, but the minute the minute Han leaves, technically they only wanted Han as bait for Luke. Yeah, and at that point, once Han leaves, how are they getting him back? I mean, if Lando, in order to Vader doesn't doesn't work as a trap. It doesn't work as a trap unless Han stays there. If every time Han shows up, he keeps leaving, then that's an ineffective trap and puts Han or Leia, Lando at increasingly it risk made it not Lando's of discovery. Problem. It would have made the next. It would have made it the next port's problem. I fully believe Lando was trying to stall and was trying to avoid having yeah. to be involved personally. But if, but it, but if it's going to be the next port's problem. Then that means the Empire needs to go set up their trap over that next port, not Cloud City. At which point, the Empire has no more need of Cloud City as a trap, which means they're either going to leave, in which case Hans Lando's deal worked, or they're going to immediately be like, "Oh, well, we don't need this as, as a trap anymore. We don't need the facade of working with this guy. Just take over, the, take over the facility." As opposed to if the trap is playing itself out, that gives Lando the time to actually. 
either he's going to rely as, on the deal or he's going to have time to actually get his people be, as away. Long as gentlemen, the gentlemen, gentlemen, I think you both have good, solid points from a certain point of view. And I think this is as far as we're going to get in this argument because you both have good points and we have reached an impasse. Can we at least agree on this? That counts as his third oh, point yeah, of view. Oh, yeah, I was definitely definitely, definitely, definitely. I burned it. That, yeah, that's yeah. my one for this. That may not have been in your argument, but you used no. it. <laughs> uh, I purposefully used it. Yeah. So. I worded it that way on purpose. Mm. <laughs> um, okay, so... Uh, was that our round uh, of hate? No. no, you still had to I still have dislike, to get my dislike. Um, which, which is going to be hard for you because, as you've commented, it's my this favorite is, movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cream um, of the crop of Star Wars for you. I mean, I mentioned some of the pacing in the lightsaber fight is a little slow. There's some weird but, pacing throughout this movie. You know, with the moving well, through the thing and all that, it's like, oh, just get to the next p- phase of the fight already. But although the rest of the fight is just through great. the fucking tunnels. Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, Luke on Dagobah. <laughs> that, that's, that's not the point we're getting at, but... Mm. A- after you're done, I'm going to make a point of it because there is so I much will say that, that's, that, that is actually probably... Everything on Dagobah before um, Yoda reveals himself, in re- when, when I watch it now, just, just kind of annoying. When they crash and sink and they're just setting up base camp. And oh, strange food this is. How do you get so big eating food like this? You know what? Yoda had to have gone crazy 30 years with nobody to talk to. But <laughs> yeah. Nah, seriously. Uh. Like, 30 years alone on a swamp planet, Yoda wasn't all there. But I'm sorry. No, I, but I, I, it's been brought up, and I'm just going to say it. God bless Frank Oz. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Puppet Yoda is the best Yoda. Definitely. Dude, he's he's the voice of all of them, too. I like, know. He, he straight up is yeah. Yoda. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you know what's really funny? Uh, when uh, he designed the puppet for Yoda, uh, he, he took a modeling bust home with him over a weekend, and this was in real early production. Mm-hmm. And this is when they had a slightly different original design for Yoda. He was a little more human, a little less green, a little less tiny. Like, just, just everything about him was slightly different. You'd recognize it as Yoda, but it, it wasn't It wasn't what right. we ultimately got. Mm-hmm. And Frank Oz comes back with this puppet, and nobody catches it right away. But, like, <laughs> about halfway through their first day after this design is approved, someone looks at the head without the ears on it, mm-hmm. impartial assembly. They look at the puppet. <laughs> they look at Frank. <laughs> and then they look at the puppet, and then they look at Frank. Frank, why did you sculpt yourself? <laughs> yep. Yoda, Yoda looks disturbingly <laughs> like Frank Oz. It's actually pretty uh, awesome. Both of uh, them have big, bulging eyes. <laughs> They're both kind of offset from his nose. Like, he looks a lot like Yoda. Well, and I, I know I'm going to get a bonk because I'm going to uh, break one of the rules here. But fun fact about Yoda, in the original Marvel uh, comic that they did, Yoda was blue a- and all scrawny spindly. It was really cool. Oh, wait a minute. I can't reach. Will you hit him again, please? <laughs> oh, I've got a longer one. Do you want that one? I mean, I can't technically reach. I just don't want to well, no, I there mean, we I, go. No, I have, I'll take I my box. No, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. It's fine. All right. Um, so I think that's uh, the dislike. Innocuous thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah weird we things have that any? nobody ever talks <laughs> about. Um, okay, I'll start this one off. Cloud City. He's falling down that uh, doom pit. All of the lights on the walls. What are they for? <laughs> Why are there lights? Why are there systems in a doom shaft? Okay. Well, why? <laughs> Here's my running theory because there's And like the lights in the tubes when he lands. In <laughs> well, what no, are no, those lights for? Uh, th- here's my running theory as to what those tubes are actually even for. What that entire system that you see Luke going through. I think that's for like service droids that have like some sort of hover lift to them. The tubes are to move Ball throughout droids. the station. 
the lights are so that uh, uh, mm -hmm. you can see where they're at from an observation platform. Like, if you have a droid that's fucking up, you need to be able to see, like, what flight path that's taking. Like, I think that's for the human operators as frame of reference. Okay, but why would you have them on all the time? Because that a system could go haywire true. at any point, so you need the points of reference at all times. I guess. I, it just I, it seems to, an enormous me, waste of electricity. Uh, to, me, to me, it's the same reason you put spotter lights on a cell phone tower. We're not saying a plane is flying by right now, but next week. Like, uh, you, it needs to be marked yeah. as a basic safety feature. I get you, but... That doesn't account for the number of lights. And why hey, are they so small if they just need to hey, I'd like to point provide out, illumination? Before Vader started ripping shit apart with the Force, there were safety railings over those drops. So at least it was better than Imperial construction. Right, speaking of Vader ri ripping stuff apart, what exactly did he rip off the walls? And why did nothing like happen when he did? Yeah, he ripped uh, the, the shit, shit out of that room, at Luke. Oh, and nothing like. I just assume that section oh, has closed have, down. Have shut you ever? Down. <coughs> have you ever seen like rural construction before, like cabins and shit? At, uh, there's there's very little actually supporting the like main superstructure, well, no, and not, then like internally you can have a million more things. Not 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 like structurally. But, like, obviously those things serve some sort of function. Redundant systems. But I still, always... Still, it would... Chief what? Engineer okay. O'Brien is looking down on you and, like, telling me, oh. you think they don't have a second reserve auxiliary backup? Okay. Um, the way I always saw it was when they go into the fight in that section, all the lights are off. I just assumed it was a shutdown portion, and he was just ripping shit off the walls that wasn't currently in use. There's still lights on, a lights on a console. So. I've also assumed most levels are cookie cutter each time they build a layer on the thing. It's identical to what's below it for certain levels. So, mm. like, yeah, he may have ripped shit out, but that may literally only affect shit on that floor. And there may be redundant systems where they can patch control over to neighboring systems. Like it, mm. we'll never get a great answer to that. You do have a point. Like you yeah. absolutely yeah. have a point. Like I'm now surprised why I've never thought about this. <laughs> but at the same time, as soon as I'm thinking <coughs> about it, I'm coming up with a lot of justifications <laughs> that sound reasonable. Mm. One of the things that bugged me when I was a kid that I later now have an answer for is why when the glass breaks is Luke sucked out? Later on, I learned about the Bernoulli effect and uh, the fact that the uh, Cloud City Tower is essentially a giant vacuum inside. You were right as a kid, though. They've done tests on this. Yeah, yeah you're the it effect is mass. weird. Too much mass can't yeah. be affected by oh, air. Also, he gets sucked out the window. Yeah. Also, the suction is always quick. It, you it, like kind of when airplanes and yeah, stuff. Yeah, a like, second maybe. Yeah, it, it, even if it's a small <laughs> hole, whoops, small hole like this on an airplane, pressure equalizes <laughs> rapidly. Instantly, like, almost snap yeah. of the instantly, fingers yeah. and it's equalized. Yeah. yeah, you would never get sucked out like that. Yeah, it, it's it's more like opening a pop can. Yeah, no, you, you yeah but all the crazy wind you get on Cloud City, and he gets sucked out of the fucking window, and it's just... Why? That, that's a valid one, although that, that falls that under could the... could also be force-assisted. That could be part of, like, a grand range. He could have just thrown him out. Yeah, yes. like that, True, that, that, yeah. That, I he really was throwing that. shit around. He could have thrown Luke around, Space too. wizards were fighting, y'all. I don't think yeah. they should be... Uh, and especially at that time, they hadn't established the force wizard <laughs> rules. Not, uh, that wasn't they until the prequel. To. They were starting really. to. This was the most. This was the most canon expansion we got on what the Jedi were. Yes, it was because, well, in expanded universe, they expanded between oh, episodes yeah. five and six. But <coughs> yeah, because like really, games and shit Return like of that. the Jedi really does nothing for expanding what our understanding of the Jedi Empire. Empire, Empire changes a few things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, be before then, you all you see is Vader choke people. You never see them throw shit around. You, know, you never see them float shit. Like so, this yeah. was the movie, especially with Dagobah floating the rocks and doing the shit with Yoda. This was where we discovered what the Force actually gave us. So, mm. the the thing that bugs me mm. that nobody nobody talks about. I mean, I've heard people talk about it, but 
it never gets enough traction and the discussions that get had around it, it seemed to really circle the drain for me. He's our only hope. No, there is another. And it's never addressed in any meaningful capacity, even in the next movie when they're I like, will hey, expand, Liz, your sister, blah, 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 Luke goes out, and as Yoda says it, the light turns red as uh, uh, Luke's flying away and then fades to black before the scene transitions. So you're saying within the context of that movie as an individual film, it's never addressed? Yes, it's never, ever addressed. It was a teaser for the next movie. Even at the time, people didn't pay it any fucking mind. It got lost everywhere else. And most of that is because Dagobah's a fucking shit show. I get what you're saying. You're saying it was a very vital and important piece of the lore that just gets overlooked. No, no. I think it's bait that is literally never delivered upon in a meaningful fashion. Well, Well, uh, the next movie. I don't don't believe believe that's a meaningful delivery upon what's... what's I I don't know how it's... it's, They they hint that there's someone else who can be the the Jedi we need to, s- to save the galaxy. And both masters know about it. And then later on in the next movie, they reveal the identity of said other individual and the relation to the whole thing. And it, that's exactly and it a payoff. Made literally zero difference to anything. Well, and that's a problem with the next Leia, movie, Leia could have this one. Leia could have been completely non-Force sensitive and Return of the Jedi plays out identically. So instead, we, we get baited for something epic and that there's more than one and that things can expand and grow, and then that's never delivered upon. But I would, I would argue that's a problem with the next movie, not this one. I have They an, set the uh, bait. I, mm, they never triggered the trap. I'm not a fan not a of I'm not movie. a fan of splitting Especially, content across uh, movies. I think Especially. it's I think it's very rude to your audience. That is a fair. I, see, I tend to come on the other side. I I like when things are connected because I'm some I'm willing to. I as an audience member feel like if you're in, you're all in, and if you're not willing to put in the extra effort, well then don't hold that against the. Which the is problem. My, my fair. problem. My problem That's isn't me, my problem isn't that Leia's Luke's sister that she's I more burned sensitive. My one already. It's it's that it's not developed in any way, shape, or form. To me, I think it just it, it's a way of. Because we have the, you also have the real world context of it was never actually supposed to be laid in the first place when they put that line in the movie. The intent w- in, in Empire was never for it to be Leia. It was for it to be an entirely well, new Luke character. Well, Luke and Leia weren't even supposed to be related. Well, yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah, was the yeah. thing they came up, he came right. up with so for the third In movie. the context of the production of the actual movie of Return of, of the Empire Strikes Back. Return the, of the Empire Strikes Back? I uh, love that movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, the best movie. Uh, they're setting up something that Return they change the their minds though. about later on. It's got a speeder bike chase and a betrayal <laughs> and an awesome fight where somebody loses a hand. It has everything. Yeah. Which again, if, plus Ewoks. Yeah. If if you're not gonna if you're not gonna give them the second bears. movie credit for paying off, you know, for sp- the spreading the linking of material from one movie to the other. If you're not going to give it credit feel, for it, you can't like hold it against the movie for not for changing its mind later on. I disagree because if we're willing to acknowledge my MacGuffin lightsaber argument, if we're willing to acknowledge the lightsaber as a valid issue with uh, the first movie, then I feel this absolutely stands as a valid Different issue, issue in this movie. No, it's not. It's it's promising of a MacGuffin and not delivering. Yeah, but the, the problem is that the MacGuffin doesn't isn't delivered. In that movie, you're claiming you're you're just saying that the problem. I is burned my one. <laughs> Come on, guys. I know. I feel you're so saying, bad for you right now. No, you're you're saying you're comparing. <laughs> you're co- the complaint there is the complaining I'm that the MacGuffin was the Disney movies. Complaining that the MacGuffin wasn't paid That'll off in that episode. film, and that it's a problem even though it shows up in later movies. You're making the argument that it's set up in that movie, and then the payoff in the next movie. 
is disappointing. It's disappointing. It's non-existent. Yeah, but one is a problem that's internal, that is internal to that film. The other is a problem that goes cuts across two different Sequel movies. Sequel baiting is shitty behavior. <laughs> Which is a valid opinion. Let's move on. Um, <laughs> the, the, only, the only thing I'll say in that, the final thing I'll say is, because it happens in the second movie of what they've already established is going to be a trilogy, I think that negates it because there's already an expectation of a third film. Which is also a valid opinion, and let's move right. on. I just wanted to get that out there. All right. Um, <laughs> I um, think we're moving on oh, to I had the... one more. I had one other one. Okay. Uh, one other one. Um... In the in the scene in the That's cave, why we hated one another at the end of the last one. <laughs> oh. Actually, we commented, we made the comment after the la- last one that was remarkably civil in comparison to our prior discussions. <laughs> we're, we're 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 not even we're not <laughs> even to the bad movies yet. Yeah, this is, no, this is even worse than rehashing we're on, old we're arguments. We're on the best movie. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, in the scene in the cave with the wampa. Yeah. Why exactly does the Wampa feel the need to hang Luke upside down? That is a little weird. I, I do have to agree with you. I think it was supposed to be the imagery of, like, uh, meat in a butchery Gentlemen. hanging from the spikes. Yeah. Gentlemen, if I may, the Wampa clearly mm-hmm. showed a level of advanced mm-hmm. intelligence from uh, mm-hmm. not only mm-hmm. its seeking out existing shelter it's fear of the and modifying it. Mm-hmm. But uh, being able to hunt and track uh, intelligent prey. Yep. Uh, the Wampa, if you recall, Luke had a small wound on his neck. The Wampa missed its target. The Wampa was trying to cut its jugular and hung him upside down so that the heart would pump would the blood out, out of the body. The meat will freeze quicker with less damage to it, and it will be preserved Wh- longer. It's a survival strategy was, in was a resource-harsh environment. No, but was Luke actually bleeding out of the wound? At the Mildly. time that he was hung, yes. He's got blood on his head. Yeah. He is Isn't actually bleeding. Yes. The Wampa thought that he was stringing him up to bleed him out in order to prep the body for long-term storage in order to make the most use out of the meat. Mm. The yep. Wampa's intelligent. That's what this tells us. Mm. Which makes what Luke does even more. Uh, I, I I think I think you're Although absolutely didn't kill it. you're you're absolutely he onto something. I mean, but I feel there's more than enough evidence I, to suggest from its behavior and it, if its if environment. That's the, if that. that's the case, because that's something I thought of too. Um, I mean, because I thought there was I was unaware of the wound thing, but even then, if he's only bleeding that little bit, because clearly he's been hanging there long enough for the wampa to eat the the. The, the tauntaun, the right? The wampa could be expecting it to the uh, Luke to bleed exceptionally slowly. Creatures from uh, uh, Arctic and subarctic climates tend to literally have thicker, more viscous blood in order to help it flow and avoid freezing in the well, colder. Well, no, that's I'm, I'm taking the opposite thing. If he's trying to bleed Luke, wouldn't he have seeing that the blood was was wasn't coming out all that fast? Wouldn't he have tried to increase the size of the wound in order to bleed him quicker? Yeah, possibly, but that's not Especially what the movie if he's showed that, us. If he's intelligent enough to figure that out, not if not if he's then trying, I think he would have not if he's trying to keep the heart pumping to do the hard work. Otherwise, he'd have to leave it strung up for days and try to keep it from freezing before it was drained. <laughs> also, he was busy eating a tauntaun. Maybe he uh, hadn't noticed. That I don't. It wasn't I, I don't think it works that way. Thought. If he's not worried about adrenaline spike poisoning the meat, which I don't know, maybe humans don't mm. have that issue like deer do, then it could legitimately be no. He's trying to get this to be uh, done the easiest way possible because if he relies just on gravity, it will take longer. Yeah, but but the point is, the heart will eventually stop. When the blood pressure and the blood level gets to a certain level, it's still then, once the heart stops, what's l- whatever is left is still going to have to drain out via gravity because the heart has stopped. It, the only, if you do it the, w- the way it would be with him with the minor thing, it's going to take longer to get to that point than it would if you just cut open his aorta and Any it all drop out. Any hunters who listen to us, weigh in on this, please. <laughs> yeah, definitely but I, I, let I don't, us I don't know. We're, we're get talking anywhere, in simply, the dark. Simply because, yeah, no, that's exactly it. Both of us, we're, we're both making very valid points and concerns, but the simple fact of the matter is 
I've never bled an animal. Have you? I understand the basic principle, but I've so never look, bled. No, an animal. I have not done it myself either. Yeah, no. yeah. yeah. So, but it's definitely yeah. something I, I, I weird. Know, that I know is how you do it. I know question. why you do I, it. I, I, I'd say it, it. It's a question that I've never heard explained or really gone into. There are questions. There are questions, oh. and nobody talks about it. it. Right. I, the, the, if, I, 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 really, I really think it's that the Womp is intelligent <laughs> and is trying to prep Luke for long-term storage and proper slaughter. I just think there's a... There's I was a little a disappointed that the extra Wampa uh, <laughs> material got cut from the uh, actual film. There was originally an entirely different scene with a bunch of Wampas and the base with stormtroopers. But... That ended up on the cutting room floor, yeah. and we never got and to there, find out and more again, about the there, there are new... C- I actually just read the book where they go into this, and uh, there is new canon explanations for stuff. I even have problems with that, because it implies the Wampa knows that... Uh, thinks that Luke is... Um, he's not trying to bleed it. He just thinks Luke is dead, and there's no... It's just, oh, this is where I'm going to store him right now. So it's even more vague in the book. So Rule number one. I didn't violate rule I number know. one. I, I, you're getting close. I Either way, the Wampa has you, questions. You'd have a hard Let's time arguing from the man's Wampa. Raya in court over this one. Let's move on from the Wampa. <laughs> All right. Was there anything else we felt we needed to mention? Mention for, for Empire. Just Empire. Any, any other general Empire things that don't necessarily fit into the categories we, we said. I mean, I've got grievances, but they don't. they don't – build to anything they're not mean like i said it is a good movie yeah we we, we don't need the, the pacing is yeah. wonky yeah. but a, how long is luke on dagobah you know yeah answering that's that's that, one answering that is yeah. the not timeline you get no sense of time movie. yeah you get no real sense of time how passage. long are they fucking at cloud city how long answering are they answering that really changes nothing uh, how long I don't think are you they can uh, answer those flying questions. through space between the asteroid field and yeah, Cloud City? I mean, yeah, uh, there's uh, issues the there. Pacing-wise, pacing wise, pacing Empire is a fucking mess. Especially it is a good movie. I'm not trying to trash talk it, but like... It, we're, at the end of the day, we're, we're nerds. We can nitpick the shit out of this thing. I don't think there's a scene we could... We well, could not have a debate about. Well, I don't. True. I don't believe. I don't believe perfection is like a good thing. I believe perfection <laughs> would ultimately be very, very boring and middle of the mm. road and appealing to everyone, but honestly loved by absolutely no. I think. Well, I, I think it's objectively impossible for one. But yeah. there is no such thing as a perfect film. You can't. Okay, critical. guys. There are three of us in this room, and we already have four opinions. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the way this works. Mass Effect uh, isn't canon. <laughs> Let's move on. Return of the Jedi. Return. We, uh, originally, it was supposed revenge to be Revenge of, the, of Jedi. the Jedi, but he felt that gave it too dark of a tone, so Lucas uh. changed it. At six days before release. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, there are definitely posters. still posters yep. and material out there that says Revenge uh, of the Jedi. There's more <laughs> posters of Revenge than first printings of uh, Return. Return. Mm. Yeah. Most Return of the Jedi <laughs> posters were never used at a movie theater. They're not actual promotional material. They are merch. Most yeah. of them are. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one I have is one of the first run merch variations rather than the movie one. Yeah. But all right, it's favorite moment on the back. Favorite thing: Return of the Jedi. Mm. Okay, I have two answers. I mean them both, both as sincerely, but one of them is a bullshit answer. <laughs> it's trap. No, the uh, the orchestra. While everyone's <laughs> winking on Jabba's barge, the dunt, bum, 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 yeah, bum, <laughs> yeah, uh, the orchestra <laughs> hits every yeah. every time. One of them is just like, <laughs> 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 that shit is so over the top <laughs> and ridiculous. B mo- C movie afternoon on <laughs> made for TV serialized bullshit <laughs> moment, but it's so fucking perfect and I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh, I I do too. That well, as I said in the first movie discussion, John Williams' work, 
through all of it. But just phenomenal. My my favorite part, and you guys are going to be mad that I'm stealing this in its entirety. <laughs> God damn Emperor Palpatine. It is it yeah. is literally, literally the most subdued performance we will ever have of Palpatine. <coughs> it is the most mellow version of Palpatine we will ever get in any of these movies ever again. Even when he shows up as Senator Palpatine and is like just a guy. It is so megalomaniacal how he is played, even when he's not well, working against the party, so to speak. Uh even in the first one, he already is. <laughs> the closest he gets to, like, the, the crazy, over-the-top shit that was... Because the laughing doesn't count. Laughing never counts. It, it just doesn't. <coughs> but Ultimate power! Yeah, that just, it just doesn't count. It just doesn't. But, but like, it's not laughing. There the, were words. The, the, closest, the closest we ever get to him, like, being over-the-top, crazy... Uh, a Flash Gordon villain level insane, which is what we see every other time. They definitely expanded his character. Oh, I am afraid your friends will find the shields quite operational. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Just, yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, uh. the entire scene in the fight following with uh vader and luke afterwards and all of that just looked down upon by uh palpatine just oh my pawns just right, i absolutely me, love that fa- scene i'm gonna interject here scenes. just because it's, it's a lead off of what you're saying i think my favorite palpatine thing which is actually probably, possibly my favorite might be my favorite moment in the whole movie um isn't actually palpatine's not actually even in the scene it's when when Vader is g- Vader gets on board, and he's dressing down the one officer for not working hard enough, and he goes, uh, "I hope so, Commander, for your sake. The Emperor is not as forgiving as I am." Yeah, right, right. I love that it, shit. It just ratchets up that level just, of oh, he's just like well, because you wow. you've only seen him in the hologram in, in Empire at this point, and it's just like. Holy shit! Yeah, depending <laughs> on what version of the movie you've seen, you've seen a uh, bad chimp mask yeah, and yeah. the wife of the prop master. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can we also discuss about what the fuck is wrong with their uh, hollow technology in Star Wars that it no. always looks no. shitty? I don't want to no. have this discussion because it just makes me mad about all of the shit that's been produced newer, even shit that is set in the older time periods. It, it uh, I don't want to talk about I don't wa- I <laughs> don't want to talk about that. Yeah. Then we'll I, move I on. will just get angry I just, and I don't have any problem it. with the holograms at all, yeah. so I I'm, I'm, it might not me, but it me. really bugs Nick, so let's move away that from it. That is the <laughs> only thing I think they should fix via the special editions. Make that shit twenty times crisper than it ever was in the original so that you can explain away why shit looks so good in the prequels. Why shit is so good for the expanded universe, old Republic shit, and I know fucking get them in. But you said you didn't want to talk about it. <laughs> okay, this does so, not have a stun setting. <laughs> we should know disintegrations, and that's close enough to count. Rule seven: <laughs> you got lucky this time, Owen. <laughs> Okay, um, favorite thing about that movie. You know, I I really liked the way they played out the whole Yoda's death scene and the little bit of yeah. GM tidbits really? to the I story. I find it really unsatisfying. It felt like I an do like that too. dump. I like I think I it's like a good exposition and world. I really like that performance. And I love oh, uh, Mark, Mark Fra- Hamill plays it well. Don't get me wrong. Well, I was talking about Frank Oz. Frank Oz plays it well. Motherfucker. I think Frank Oz is plays he, your, he in exists it real well. to answer like three questions and then fade away. I actually feel it's kind of an abuse of the prop and set, but I like it. I opinions. think it works. I think it really works. I yeah, agree with you. I, I enjoyed that scene um, as well as the weight that it means fell squarely on Luke's shoulder as the last trained Jedi. 
Although amount of training is really uh, that's questionable. A, that's a debate we've already seen. We're yes, not going to have exactly. But you know. realistically, as far as Luke knows, he's the last one in the entire galaxy. Last Jedi, you say? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it is definitely must a, resist I, I urge to say it. Why do I? Why do I uh. feel as though there were suddenly? <laughs> Thousands of fans which cried out and then nothing. Were silenced by Disney Corporation. No, but <coughs> <laughs> Le- right, least favorite thing. Let's at least save the Disney bashing for when we get to the <laughs> Disney films. Please. Okay. I make no promises. My biggest Clearly with the last movie <coughs> is the way they treat Leia. They finally establish that she is Luke's sister. She is Vader's daughter. She has the same stakes in this as Luke does. And she's just pretty And pr- she just gets princess. left back. Yeah. She had just as much right to be there at that confrontation yeah. as Luke did. And they just abandoned her. Her her battle track record is better than fucking Solo's by what we've seen. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't think she should have been at the final confrontation because that was very much about Luke and her, like Luke and his father and that dynamic that's been set up. It's supposed to be about family. You're telling me she ain't family now? Yeah. Well, I'm not saying, I will agree with this. There should have been more with Leia and once she learns that, Lu- you know, um... It was essentially a throwaway line that they never paid out on. Yeah. Well, because the part of the problem is she learns yeah, it. Th- in, th- I, I agree with you. you well, you're you're on to something. Yeah, there, there should have been more payoff there with her and dealing with that issue because it's split. They split the dialogue. At one point, she finds out that Vader is Luke's father, and then later on, she finds out that her and Luke are siblings. She's always known. And they never see you. Never see her put those two together and realize. Well, I'm sorry. Vader is my father. You never see that on screen. Well, and it's even worse because her and Vader were <laughs> physically like as far apart as we are. Her father tortured uh, her. Exactly. He would have known. Well, that the the force. You know, you look like this uh, senator I met <laughs> from Naboo once. Where are your parents from, kid? You say you're the senator from Alderaan. Bail. Well, oh, Anakin did deal with Bail Organa. True, true, like, but so like, did Vader. I, as part I can of the buy. Senate. I can buy him not realizing that that's his daughter. I served with your father during the Clone Wars. Okay, they hid his son with his only living relatives. Yeah, because they knew he the never. Fuck. Because they knew he never go back. There's a there is a <laughs> massive plot hole with the idea of Vader never felt them through the Force. The, it is, it is yeah. such a massive and unforgivable oversight. And that's that is truly what it is. It's an oversight. They never Nobody thought, it thought about it. They it's, never it, thought it, it through. It's, it's, it's not malicious mm. intent. It's not stupidity. It's just blatant mm. oversight. I can, st- I still buy it though. I can, the fact that he doesn't know, know that he, that they exist. The All fact right, that I'm, they're I'm, I'm not going to extend extended universe. I'm going to the real universe. George Lucas, on the Daily Show, being interviewed by John mm. Stewart, posed this exact point to him about how Vader never uh, caught on to where Obi Wan was. Never figured out where Luke was. Never figured out where Leia was when she was literally a member of the Imperial Senate by the point of the first movie. Uh, Literally points it out. And George just gets red-faced and doesn't have an answer. Yeah, he just never thought it through at the True. time, and it was left up to the authors this and is, the writers this is like of the Kessel expanded universe okay. to figure okay. it out. George Lucas also th- also thought Jar Jar Binks was well, a good idea. George Lucas's okay. opinion but is not relevant here. But his kids liked him. And in the script, <coughs> it is stated that uh, that that Obi Wan 
was supposed to give the impression that he disbelieved and the, Luke's and the performance lie. and Harrison the performance Ford was given was such a magnificent performer and the performance given does depict that, that I will give you that it. Obi-Wan g- gets a very dismissive look on his face <laughs> and leans back in his chair putting yeah. distance between them no 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 body language everything yeah. that Canonically, is absolutely Han was how that shit. was played that is absolutely how it was played it was the fans afterwards that mm. went back and rewrote it to make it it's, work it's still contested that's the issue. i know i know because in the actual script han's full of shit uh, it, it. but we're on jedi um <laughs> very yeah. pictures full of coke <laughs> oh no. I will not talk about Star Wars Christmas special. I will not talk about No, Star we won't Wars because Christmas that is most that, that is that, not that's canon. That's not trilogy. That's non trilogy. Nope. That's not can, that's not canon there in is anybody's no holiday universe. Special. <laughs> the only the only thing anybody wants out of that to be canon is that Bay Arthur is in Star Wars. That's, that's the only yeah, thing. Bay <laughs> Arthur totally runs the canon. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Just like, fuck the Empire. <sighs> <coughs> musical numbers. This is the <laughs> end, my friends. Uh, uh, Jedi. So Jedi. Yeah, all right. Um, Jedi. Where, where the hell are we? Um, We, we to... were kind of arguing between things we liked and things we hated. Well, we're, su- we're supposed to be on <laughs> shitty things, and I still haven't gone. I don't think we ever went around and managed the likes, but yeah. Um, I talked about how I, I like Palpatine. I, I, okay. I had that line, the Vader line. Okay. Yeah. So. D- uh, didn't you say? <coughs> that you oh had? yeah, I was talking about yeah. the uh, death scene. Yeah. No. So Yoda, so we had we had so. moved on to shitty things, and I know I hadn't said my shitty <laughs> thing. That's right. I had started that one off. Yeah. My my shitty thing comes back to Mark Hamill's dialogue, and this time I fully do not blame Mr. Uh, Hamill at all in any way, shape, or form. Uh, Mark wanted to take the character as he ultimately turned dark and just outright killed the Emperor, and mm-hmm. I, I fully agree with that turn of events. It would have been more powerful. It actually would have left things open for sequels sooner than when we got them. I ship that. Yeah, not 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 here or there. As much as I talk about uh, sequel <coughs> baiting being shitty, that's not sequel baiting. That's leaving a story open. That's 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 having a that's having an end to the story that subverts expectation. I. Well, and that would be that would be the ending or, Ryan Johnson would have written. But there was a lot of powerful imagery and everything with the ultimate villain of the series turning against his master well, to it, Well, the, the also full confession, I don't think Jedi is a good movie. I as much as I think Empire has pacing problems, Empire redeems itself by being visually stunning and engaging even though it is confusing to watch. Jedi never fucking achieves that. Absolutely never. You, you don't think Jedi is at least wor- worth it for the, for the space battle or the final no. confrontation? They no, never really I pay off for the space battle. I don't think like, they set it up, and we see surprisingly little. You can of it. you can show me like timers saying no, we got you know this much more time in space action sequences with actual things happening, not just ships <laughs> drifting by and shit like. You can mathematically show me that it's, you know, the best. I don't feel we saw anything that pushed the bounds any further than what we had seen in the previous movies. That said, the previous movies were visually stunning and incredibly awesome to watch. So even (coughs) if they don't raise the bar so long as they meet the bar, which I'm willing to say they did, you're still going to get incredible visuals. Mm. Even if they don't strike you the same way, they are still incredible visuals. I like the forest setting where they filmed for Endor. That that whole oh, forest oh, the, is just the, fantastic. The redwood, the redwood forest yeah. out in California? Yeah, yeah, yeah that, no, that, that is, is just a fantastic area. Beautiful. Mm. Yeah, no, my, my biggest issue is Mark Hamill's mm. dialogue because for the third act, when he's directly confronting the, em- the emperor... He just keeps going in circles, saying the same thing for like five. It minutes. gets recursive. Yeah. yeah, it 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 doesn't build. It doesn't go anywhere. And the scene is meant to show him being tested to violence, and I don't feel it conveys that point at all. It it, it feels like he just keeps kind of doubling down. It just on. feels like a boring stall for time, so that the rest of the plot can play out. Yeah. It really doesn't have a meaningful impact. For me personally, I get that. Yeah, I, I, I think 
I think it's, it does. I like that scene. The, but the, I get that. The him, the him, you know, going back and forth between the, the, the being tempted by uh, the dark side and, thing. And, and like I said, the dirty secret here is I don't think Return of the Jedi is a good movie. Yeah. Um. Yeah. With with that, I think I think the the him going back and forth between the, the dark and the, the the light, the dark side of it is is portrayed simply through through the action. It's not the dialogue. His actions when yeah, he loses when control he when he physically Vader loses control of himself, <sighs> you know, and it's it's a case of they keep taunting him and he keeps See, losing control a little bit, but then he when, always pulls himself back even back once in. The scene starts moving; it doesn't feel like it goes anywhere. Like that that's my big issue. I'm fine with it. like it works for me because. I think the the dialogue back and forth between like him and Vader works because you know they they, they had the, the bit back and forth at the beginning where okay it's the lightsaber fighting in and of itself keeps me into it and then eventually he starts taunting him with the Leia thing which is the real the big thing that almost get you know kind of gets him and then eventually you know he actually cuts off Vader's hand which is kind of that big climactic moment where it's like oh shit he actually knocked him down. And then, well, you know, and you get symbolically, the it was the same hand Luke had. Yeah, lost, and then you get that, and then you get that similarity symbol- between symbology and that n- mental mind state set that you know um, kind of finally grounds him and ropes him back down, where he's just nope, that's it. It's finally, it's I will not do this. He's not going back and forth anymore. He is done. He is willing to. He will. He is immovable at that point. Yeah, and I think the emperor senses that, and that's why that is when the emperor takes the moment, chooses the moment of, all right, well, this ain't gonna work. Force I'm gonna, lightning. I'm gonna force lightning your ass. <clears throat> I, I will say I do like the force lightning <laughs> sequence. The original effects every, were just literally fantastic. everything surrounding yeah. it. I think is trash. Like, the the actual like emperor <laughs> shocking the shit out of Luke. That's actually really cool and engaging. <laughs> Everything around it, every piece of connective tissue leading to it is cancerous. <laughs> uh, you know what yeah. I think <coughs> I feel deserves the honorable mention here? Han Solo's Bugs Bunny bullshit <laughs> down on the moon. <laughs> where, where he just sneaks up behind the guy, taps him, and runs away. <laughs> like... I love I love, I the love him I love shit. him running down a hallway, camera pans, rounds a corner. Comes running back, camera pan. <laughs> yeah. All right, controversial. Another, another controversial opinion. My favorite part of the stuff that goes on 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 the forest moon is the Ewoks. I so I was how's disappointed to know that you're by a disappointment Ewoks. to your parents. <laughs> uh. <clears throat> okay. Uh, something nobody ever talks about. Ewoks clearly are carnivores. Yes. Yes. And where, I know where you're going with this. Where did Leia get, get the, the dress? dress? They just had it there. They just had it on hand. They had enough selections <laughs> that she had something that was fitted to her. There had to, how many did they offer her? <laughs> yeah, these things clearly ate people, and nobody ever fucking talks about it. Well, none of the rest of them had a gold guy. And then at the end, at the party, mm. they have all the suits of armor. Where are those stormtroopers? Where are those storm... No, don't look at the barbecue. Where are those stormtroopers? <laughs> there was a buffet line on yeah. every tree platform. Yeah. All right. They were simple <laughs> hunter-gatherers. I have a hard time believing that spread is part of their annual cycle. All right. How long were they on Endor? Because when did the Ewoks find the time to fix them fucking traps? It's just, they just have them there. That's just what Ewoks do in their free time. Like, like the small ones that they get the Stormtroopers with, all right. But the thing that they take the, the ATSD out with. Yeah, the giant log yeah. trap thing. Why the hell would they have that? There's, there's a Bruce Wayne Ewok in the corner <laughs> talking about how if it's even a 1% possibility we have to treat it as inevitable yup nub yup yup nub nub yup nub and then we burn the entire forest sir yeah. actually like like <laughs> like i like the stuff with the ewoks whether it's the, them stealing the bikes or the stuff going on in the ewok village more than i do the speeder bike case okay what is 
wrong with you? I I don't agree with that, yeah. but I okay. know the speeder bike now, mind you, you and I've told to seek professional I, help. I've told not, you this before. I'm just generally not a fan of chase scenes in movies in general. No, I find no, them boring. You're not. I have tried to I show find them you. boring. Dude, I he, get that. He found the original Terminator to be slow. I didn't find either one of them to be great. The second one was better than the first one. I can't believe you Mostly like because the of the special one. effects were much I better. I cannot believe you like the third one. No one likes the third one. I I thought it was I thought it was interesting. I thought the twist at the end was actually Worth, more worthwhile than anything about in the Terminator today. We're talking about Star Wars. The twist at the end of the dun, third dun, Terminator dun, movie. Dun 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 dun. That is literally the dun, best. Dun 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 dun. Literally, dun, literally dun, the best part of the Terminator dun, movies. Dun dun. Oh wait, no, wrong movies. Wrong movies. No. Two more rotations. Oh, is it? Okay. I played this four separate times in school. Twice in middle school. Different arrangements every time. And twice in high school. And by the uh, third time, the first time in high school, we were playing the full John Williams version. I played the bass drum part literally Every single time. And you wouldn't think that's like an important thing to Duel of the Fates, but you actually really need that thump thump mm-hmm. to actually communicate. There's nothing with enough. Underneath. There's, there's nothing with enough bass in the winds anywhere. Tubas can't do it. Trombones yeah. can't do it. There is nothing with enough bass to do it. So like I have that so indelibly memorized in me musically. <clears throat> no, 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 no. It is 13 four, four bars repeated before you get to the uh, first line of the piccolos. <laughs> then it is another 13 bars before you have the, have the rest of the woodwinds. <laughs> and then after 10 bars, you have the brass and it switches. <laughs> I, See, my favorite I have done this just... too many fucking times. Yeah. I, I didn't have to look at the sheet music by the fourth time we got a John Williams collection. I was like, oh, fuck, I know this. My favorite was always just dun, 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 dun. We never did the Imperial March. We never did the Imperial March. We did a Star Wars medley one year, which was where we got uh, Duel of the Fates one time, but we never did just the straight Imperial March. That's like a five-minute piece. We did Imperial March a couple of times, and uh, absolutely Mm. one of my favorite pieces of music uh, to play on. The whole composition's really long. Mm. All right. But, um, um, I don't think I did the uh, least favorite thing in the. I don't, I don't I think, think so. Either. I mean, I kind of kind of hinted at Jedi it. for us, Alan. I kind of hinted at a little the, the speeder bike chase. I find it dull. I don't know how that is such a good scene. The the effects in that scene for the time were so difficult to pull off oh, and yeah. were executed so well. Like, th- I have issues I like with low amount, the low <laughs> amount of visual tearing between the models and the moving background shots is incredible. That I is have, so hard to sync. I do have mm-hmm. to agree with Alan on one point here. I find it incredibly hard to believe that anyone with human reflexes could ride vehicles at upwards of 200 miles an hour through a densely wooded Digital forest. assist through the trooper's heads-up display. And force users. With Luke, yes. Leia, not so much. He's got it. She's got it. Yeah, she's got it. With no training whatsoever. Case in point, the the lackluster Uh, uh, point from the second movie getting a lackluster payout. uh, Anakin in the pod races. Anakin had no training when he was in the pod races, and he He still used the force. Agreed. Very valid point. Agreed. I I feel that it's, it's almost the identical controls. It's the fucking caterpillar. Yeah, same situation. Agreed. I'll give you that and, point. And I will say, it's a little better when, I mean, like, the first time you see it, because there's tension there of what's going to happen or whatever. But once you know exactly how it's going to play out, I, I lose. I get nothing out of it. <laughs> speaking, I of that. speaking to the defense of that <laughs> scene, because I, I genuinely feel obligated to. Oh, I know. It's a controversial opinion. I, I know that. I much prefer the, after the scene itself scene, when he's on the ground and lightsabering. That but. scene jumps between frantic movement so quick that you cannot determine the background to stationary perspective shots that the characters move through 
to give you the proper impression of the speed. You see I like the pretty explosions. In, <coughs> you see it internally and externally, <coughs> simultaneously, and you never get confused about where you are in the scene or where the characters are in the scene. Oh, I, I give it them... It is very well filmed. Yeah, I give them full credit for the technical aspects that, of that. Uh, that scene Absolutely. is wonderful. Well, you know me. Like, any time I watch something, the dialogue at the back of my head is... Okay, three. You pan the camera back three more feet. I'm gonna see a guy uh, holding a uh, thing that has the craft services menu because <coughs> they're about to break for lunch. Like, and that's that's fucking hilarious to me. And it colors everything I watch. And mm. for some, that ruins it. For me, it makes everything better because it allows me to remember. No, there there's people making this. This is this is just a thing we can all do. Anyone can do this. Yeah, it's, no. it's a matter Whereas of equipment. I and time. highly <coughs> place immersion in the universe I'm watching. Yeah. Oh, oh, I I can I will I will still be fully immersed while having this realization. This is this is a this is a yeah. meta I understanding. Can't do that. It's a yeah, meta no understanding of the medium over the actual uh ingestion of the medium. Yeah, no. Yeah. Like, if I try to think about the movie on that level while I'm watching it, it takes me out of the movie. I have no issues with it. It it help mm. it helps me more. <clears throat> yeah, especially especially if it's a uh, scene in a very challenging environment. Like, uh, uh, th- this is completely unrelated. I'm gonna jump to Jurassic Park because I think technically it doesn't <laughs> violate any of our rules. Um, expanded universe, maybe. <laughs> trilogy only. only. It's yeah. it's Spielberg. It's number two. Even. Trilogies only. It's Jurassic Spielberg, Park is it's two tri- Spielberg. That is and two there trilogies. Are, those are trilogies. One oh, of them's incomplete. I haven't seen the last one. Oh, yet. It's still a trilogy, I was, though. I was about to lie and say there's no Star Wars characters in Jurassic Park, but Samuel That's a lie. Jackson. Yep. Yeah. Yep. My uh, uh, uh. But um. No, um, uh, <coughs> like like a perfect example is uh, in Jurassic Park when they went to film the T Rex scene, the the rain that's coming down that was not planned for. That was a huge fuck up in their filming. Yep. It actually really fucked up the T Rex rig, and they broke it while filming because the foam that the body was made out of absorbed the water and made Leaked. it so much heavier. Right. It was not designed <coughs> to carry this way. If you really watch the scene, the T-Rex is really jerky, and it's because the hydraulics could not take it. It also makes it a little scarier in a lot mm-hmm. of ways. Yeah. But, mm. like, watching that, it doesn't break immersion for me to think about all of the film crew having to be out in mm. that weather. For those actors, <coughs> even in between takes, even if you have like some sort of like dining fly, mm-hmm. rain fly thing set up, you're not dry, you're not comfortable. You're living this right now. We're playing pretend. We're on an adventure that doesn't exist and can't exist. But you're living this right now, and I can share it through the, the empathy that all people have by mm. watching it here. See, I, I appreciate d- method acting. Mm. I can get that out of a movie later on, like going back over it for that purpose. I but don't it's want totally, to know it the first time. But it's a totally different experience than I, watching the movie for the movie's I, sake. I experience it simultaneously. No. Yeah, the, only, well. like, the only time I, re- other than like if I'm doing that specifically to like admire the work, the only time in movie I will focus on the fact that it's a film is that I'm watching something that's really cringy, like, you know, one of those moments where you get embarrassment by proxy, where you feel embarrassed for the characters, or if it's something really, really, s- like, scary or whatever, and I'm... It's like watching the third feeling... Evil Dead movie, and it's the scene where Ash is going, and this is my boomstick! And then a distinguished family member walks in. I haven't seen those movies, so I can't. We are gonna have <coughs> to sit down and watch some movies, Alan. Uh, Okay. Really but, only two. But yeah, but no, we can skip the first. He won't like the first one. He won't be able to put up with the first one. <laughs> he probably won't be able to first put up with rough. either of them, with <laughs> either of the other two, but. Campy horror. The films but. that launched Sam Raimi's career. Yeah. And but, Bruce Campbell's. But we digress. <laughs> Bruce Campbell. Yeah. Um, we were attempting to discuss Bruce Campbell? Jedi. Yeah, but. Uh, but yeah, Bruce I did- Campbell. Yeah, but unless but we have nothing else to say about Jedi, because we seem to be uh, rambling off um, here. Bruce Campbell. 
I will. I'll say like I. I do like <clears throat> just the overall ending narrative of how it ends the franchise how, or ends the rather ends the trilogy. Really? That reminds I me, I got a cliffhanger still. I mean, at least the broader story is a cliffhanger, which I think leaves open more stories. Oh, many writers took advantage but, of that. But the actual narrative, especially when you put it in the context of, if you include the prequels as a six-movie thing, it, it the brought story it to of, an end. It, it brings the end, the end of the story of Luke Skywalker, like him learning who he is, embracing, you know, getting that power, embracing it, um, avoiding the dark path that everyone's afraid he's going to go on, and accomplishing the goal that he sets out to do, which is to save his father. A- achievement it unlocked. Wraps up, yeah, and it also fin- it wraps up Anakin's story. Yes, uh, that was the more important one. You know, once you include the prequels in there, I will it say, finishes I Anakin's I really arc. wish they had kept the scene of him making his lightsaber at the very I beginning. No, wasted mm. screen time. I, I understand why they cut it, but it was a really cool scene. It, it's mm. 20 seconds. Most of it's an establishing shot. I've yeah, seen exactly. it. Exactly. Mm. I felt it's it nothing. wasn't. It's nothing. <laughs> it would have been nice to see it actually on mm. screen. I don't blame me, them for cutting to it. To me, that is the kind of stuff that belongs in the expanded universe. It's the a nice, cool does, thing, but I don't need yeah. it in the movie. The one that does bug me during that set of establishing shots we see on screen is... We see a box canyon with a bunch of banthas going into the box canyon. Why are they going into a box canyon? Uh, because in the middle of the day, uh, cause, uh, in a desert, depending on what that surrounding canyon is like, there could be a uh, bedrock basin where water collects from yeah. the mesa top. Water, and there could be uh, vegetation in a shielded area that's yep. not that would being be baked by the sun the entire day. That would be nice, um, but the landscape we see is sand dunes, just with oases or a thing. Yes, they are, and there could have been one just off screen, but purely uh, by what we see, is we don't, well, the it's just questionable. Is we don't know the Why geology. Where are they going yeah. there? We don't know the geology. Yeah. Well, uh, talking about weird uh, things that for, make us question. For all you know, there could be some sort of rock tunnel where they're uh, purposefully farming fungus underground in order to feed these things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there, like there's there there's a been, million explanations. Yeah. There could have been an entire sand people convent just <laughs> off screen, but that's my point: is we have no idea why they're mm. apparently wandering into a box canyon. There's clearly it something makes me in question. there. There's something what in there they want. Yeah. yeah. I wonder what was there. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, um, <laughs> wonder away. I don't think anyone <laughs> right, cares enough to answer thing, you. All right, there's <laughs> one other thing, and this gets everybody brings this up, but especially in context hey, of the with, uh, in the context question. of the expanded universe, is why they bring this up. But Boba Fett, Boba Fett, Boba, Boba Fett goes Boba out. Fett. Boba Fett goes out like a little bitch. Oh, he! Uh, if you're going purely by what we see on screen, yep. he stands around looking intimidating. He pushes a hover Han trolley, and uh, then he gets whacked in the back, slams into the side of a boat. Well, float boat thing. Barge. Floating pa- I've explained, yeah, the barge. I've explained uh, and this. falls into yeah, a solar yeah. pit. Yeah. I've explained yeah. this to people dozens he of times. He is nothing more than a cool outfit. I've explained this dozens of times. Boba Fett has a tentacle fetish and didn't want to be considered weird and lose (laughs) reputation and work. So he needed to make it look convincing when he just jumped into that pit of bliss. (laughs) Oh, that is a horrible analysis of that. Prove me wrong. At least, at, le- at least it's uh, interesting. It's internally consistent. <laughs> it is at least entertaining. I don't think anybody would throw themselves into a Sarlacc pit to di- to die over the course of a century simply for a fetish. No, no, the armor's there to protect him so that he doesn't die. He just gets the fun part. There's no indication in the movies at all that the armor he's wearing would per- protect him from the Sarlacc pit. There's no indication that it wouldn't. Uh, the giant gaps in the armor all over the place. Yeah. 
They were just plates sewn onto a bodysuit. And correct me if I'm wrong. And you notice there were two distinct butt plates, not one solid one to protect. Yes, and, I saw that. And correct me if I'm wrong, but there there is no mention of Beskar in the movies. No, no none nope, whatsoever. That yeah. was invented so that's in the expanded his, universe. His armor's not <laughs> special in any way, shape, or form based upon the films. Yeah. As far as we see in the films, it may as well just be differently colored... Uh, uh, like stormtrooper plates, it may as well be yeah, the same no. thing as far as we know. It, it's uh, terms if you've of ever the seen the concept art of the prototype armor, it is more or less stormtrooper armor. Yeah, they they cut it back mm. because they didn't want to just have him a green and brown. Well, there's a uh, stormtrooper. There was a mail-in action figure. You had to get mm. uh, specific uh, barcodes from the action figures and mail them into the manufacturer to get it. But there was a prototype armor Boba Fett figure that came with uh, some, you know, promotional mm-hmm. photos on it of a dude in uh, matching armor. You know, an actual person mm-hmm. in actual suit. Um, and, yeah, it, it really looks like Stormtrooper armor. And not just mm-hmm. because it's white. There, it, it is more than just the color yeah, it palette. It was very being. similar design. Well, and... Even though it's not shown in any of the movies, and we all agree that the holiday special is non-canon, um, the first time we ever actually <laughs> see Boba Fett is during the cartoon in the holiday special. Yeah. And he's more blue than green in that one. They ch- and changed every his design. And Han Solo mm-hmm. has no eyes in that <laughs> cartoon. And Luke Skywalker looks like he's tripping on acid. They so all kind of look like yeah. they're tripping on acid. And there's that weird scene with uh, it Chewbacca had to make the viewers at home down. feel like they were on acid. Like, yeah, yeah. It, there are so many problems with that. But I think that brings us to nominally the end of today's conversation on the or- original trilogy. We will get back to, uh, we'll talk about the prequels, we'll talk about the new Disney trilogy, just not today. Um, So, thank you guys for listening to us uh, ramble on about Star Wars today. We are informed and confused. Go ahead and hit us at our Twitter. At infoconfused on twitter.com. I'm Ben. I'm Alan. I'm Nick. And may the Force be with you. Always. There's a little garage on a small town street I like to meet my friends there every week And I know we'll talk about some facts and things History and science and some crazy shit Talking it out with Alan, Ben, and Nick And I know that it's gonna be a weird-ass show Ooh, the world is spinning round Now we're gonna